Today, live on TV5, the Saginaw Spirit taking on the Owen Sound attack. And right now, you are looking live inside the Dow Event Center, where in just minutes, the puck will drop and the Spirit will continue their pursuit for a spot in the OHL playoffs. Hello and welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us for this special presentation. I'm your host Steve Weissman. I got my Saginaw Spirit tie on and well we are ready to go. The Saginaw Spirit have come quite a long way since their inaugural season three years ago and for the first time in their short history they're making a run at the postseason. One of the big reasons for their turnaround is well better players. Right now there is none better for the Spirit than this guy Merrick Kavapel. I like to say he's Kavate. He ranks second in the OHL for points among rookies with 49. Plus minus is at six, just one of a handful of Spirit players in positive territory. And Kavapel scored the only goal in the last meeting versus the Owen Sound here in Saginaw. And while even though the Spirit are improved this season, they aren't yet among the elite teams in the OHL. However, their opponent today, the Owen Sound Attack, is among the top clubs, sitting only behind the London Knights in points for the season. Plenty of talented guys skating for the attack, including Stefan Ruzitska. This OHL All-Star is in the top five in goals scored. He's also in the top 20 for points, and well, his plus-minus is one of the best in the team. He's explosive, and while well, he's eaten up the spirit in the past, scoring five goals and four assists in seven career games versus Saginaw. Well, those are just a couple of players to keep your eye on today. Plenty more great players are going to be on the ice. That's here from the studio. We'll be back right here at intermission for all the highlights. But right now, let's get you out to the Dow Event Center and our play-by-play -play team of Greg Brady and Jeff Jackson. Take it away, guys. Thanks very much, Steve. Yeah, it is a big day for Saginaw today at the Dow Event Center. I'm joined by Jeff Jackson, assistant coach right now in the New York Islanders, but he knows this league, head coach with the Guelph Storm, and went all the way to the Memorial Cup when Guelph hosted a few years ago. And, Jeff, you know, big run for the playoffs right now with 19 games left. Every point's valuable for Saginaw, and they're far from being out of this playoff hunt. Well, I think that's the big key for them is that they have to try and get a point at least every game. And then going into the, the stretch run, it's always difficult because teams up their level of play like two or three times during the season, and this is uh, the most crucial time of all. We'll have a lot more coming up, and uh, including an interview with Bob Mancini, but we'll get to the national anthems coming up first. Oh, Canada, followed by the Star-Spangled Banner, Spirit and Attack to Come, today from Saginaw. Stand 
Spirit and Attack set to go from the Dow Events Center. Let's set it ice level right now, right by the bench. Scott Cool will be a busy man today as with head coach and general manager Bob Mancini. Scott? Thanks, guys, up top. Appreciate that. Coach Mancini, obviously this is a big game for a number of reasons, but maybe the most important, this team's fighting for a playoff spot. Yeah, it is, and every game is important right now. I know uh, we have to be ready to play at the drop of the puck tonight, and if we do that, uh, every time we have, we've been in every game. Coach, this is a very talented team you're facing tonight, too. This might also send a message that this team is ready if you could come away with a win this afternoon. Well, you know, every team is good in this league, and it doesn't matter who we're facing at this point. The confidence I have is the players on our bench, and I think we'll do a great job today. All right, best of luck on this live event today. Do one for TV5, do one for the entire city of Saginaw. Thank you. Send it back up to you guys. Thanks very much, Scott. And we've ceremonial face-off going on with the Vice President of the Dow Chemical Company, Don Taylor, and his family in on it, uh, dropping the puck between Thomas Harrison and Jonathan Lehunt, both captains for both teams. Of course, uh, Owen Sound wearing the black jerseys and sagging on their traditional home jerseys, the white with the blue on the shoulders. Now let's get to the uh, goaltender matchups as we have, uh, of course, Mike Brown in net for the Owen Sound attack. We'll get a shot of him in just a sec. There you see him. And very talented goalie, Jeff, certainly capable of stoning many a good team on a uh, night-in, night-out basis. Yeah, I think the big thing for Mike is consistency, and uh, I think he's shown that over the last month that uh, what type of goaltender he can be. And uh, hopefully tonight uh, the Saginaw spirit will be able to uh, find some holes in him. Well, they know his strengths and weaknesses real well, of course, having played nearly two and a half years here. Jeff Weaver at the other end. An overage goalie that's brought a lot of consistency to Saginaw's net as well. You see him, 9.15 save percentage, 11th in the league, and a lot of uh, real veteran from uh, both his Plymouth and Sault Ste. Marie days. Uh, no question, and he's a real competitor, and I think that's what makes him such a strong goaltender. We saw the keys to the game. We'll get back to those, mention those in a bit, but we are underway here. As we mentioned, Saginaw going right to left on your television screen. Greg Brady, Jeff Jackson, glad you could join us today. Scott Cool and Steven Weisman, of course, a big part of this team as well. Spirit get the puck out or almost out over the blue line to start it out. And a little incident right in front of the Saginaw bench. And you see Thomas Harrison and Paul Bissonnette uh, renewing acquaintances. They got to know each other real well for several months. And uh, the longtime former Spirit captain getting it uh, a little bit into it a little bit with the current Saginaw captain. And I think an early penalty for Saginaw. So a bit of over-exuberance from Thomas Harrison. will put Owen Sound on the power play right away, Jeff. Yeah, and that's uh, something I think Saginaw wants to stay away from. I think it's really important that they play a real disciplined game. and. Uh, I know Mr. Harrison has found his way to the box a few times in the past. He, know, he knows the route. He knows the guys in there uh, real well and uh, gives Christmas cards, Valentine's cards, all that stuff. Spirit get it down the ice. You saw the keys to the game. You saw the three R's up there. And those are the big three. Some Ruzicka, Ryan, and Richardson. They're the uh, certainly the talented forwards. And it's Stefan Ruzicka, son of former NHLer Vladimir Ruzicka, out there now. And he'll retreat to get the puck in his own zone, as will Bissonnette. Paul Bissonnette back in behind his own goal. Harrison for a rough at 15 seconds in. And Owen Sound on the power play. They've got the second best man advantage in the league with 49 power play goals this year. Now the puck up in the air. Lee Hunt took a big hit from Burner. Now Rozichka does carry it over the blue line. And Owen Sound controls down deep. Jared in the slot. Lee Hunt. That shot banked off of J.B. Kleeskate. Now it's back to the right point to Sanganetti. Sanganetti, a pretty talented 17-year-old. Another penalty coming up to Saginaw. Bissonnette for the point. Tries to get it on Netty. Missed on the left post side. Weaver gives a slash in front. Now Corrente doesn't want to touch it up. He finally does down deep. And a slash is going to come perhaps to Jeff Weaver or to Jamie Klee. And it's Klee headed to the penalty box. So not what the Spirit wanted right out of the gate. A two-man advantage for Owen Sound for a minute and three seconds coming up. Yeah, I'm not sure this is what Coach Mancini wanted to start the game off, uh, trying to kill off a two-man disadvantage. It's a real uh, difficult situation to try to play to play against, and uh, Owen Sound's power play's got their top unit out there, so I'm sure it's going to be a difficult challenge. Spirit will send out Pat Aslan to take the draw. McNeil and Gimlet out there as well. Draws one back to the very talented Bobby Ryan, who will play it from the left point. Ryan to Sakara, back to Ryan, top of the circle. Richardson in the slot, fan of the shot, and Weaver will cover up and make the save. And McNeil tries to move Jarrett out in front. We talk about Bobby Ryan, nearly a consensus, Jeff. Top 10 NHL draft pick. Should there be an NHL draft this year? Scouts have had their eye on him for a long, long time. Yeah, extremely talented young American player. I think that uh, without question, he'll go uh, in, in the early first round. And it's something uh, it's for me to see him the first time this season uh, playing the point of the power play. Yep, something uh, he wasn't able to do as a 16-year-old, but now in his second year, uh, more than able to uh, get the job done from nearly any position on the man advantage. Now Jarrett collects. He was another first overall pick out there against another first overall pick, Patrick McNeil from two years ago. Patrick Jarrett was the first pick four years ago by the Mississauga Ice Dogs. 
Spirit need a clear here. Richardson, though, able to keep it in. Gets it back to Ryan. Top of the circle, in tight. The side of the goal. Weaver makes the save. It kicks off Richardson. Richardson on the backhand, and Weaver covers up again. And that's the thing with Jeff Weaver, isn't it? A big goalie, not a lot of spectacular saves, but he gets in the way of the puck, and he doesn't give up a lot of rebounds because of that size. Well, and the thing I liked about him on that penalty kill is he redirected passes through the crease a few times there because, really, that's what Owen Sound's trying to accomplish is uh, get a cross-crease pass and have a empty net situation, but uh, he did a real nice job with his stick and body getting across there to de deflect those passes. Spirit will get Pyatt out there now on the faceoff. Very talented 17-year-old. Owen Sound wins it, however, back to Sakara. He banks it off of Pyatt. It'll get down deep again, and Owen Sound's Richardson controls. Top of the circle, far side to Ryan, who's now playing up front here. Richardson in the slot. Weaver comes out to challenge, and the puck skips to the corner. Now Harrison out of the box. Still 54 seconds to kill, however, but the Spirit do have another body out there. Now it's Mike Angelitas around the boards. Richardson lost the lumber. Now he's got to find it. Harrison tried to get it out. Sakara keeps it in. Deflects off Harrison. It'll go to the quarter, and Michael Berner tries to backhand up the board. Still Owen Sound puck. Ryan in the slot. Trying to get a wrist shot down low, and Weaver kicked it out right to Pyatt. And Pyatt will send it down the ice. Ryan tried a bit of an off-speed shot there. Hoping to catch Weaver drifting out a bit too far. Now Aslan with a poke check, and Sanganetti has to retreat in his own zone. What a momentum boost it would be for the Spirit to kill a five on three, and Good job by Jesse Gimlet, the former Owen Sound attack, pushing Richardson offside. That's the thing, isn't it? When you don't score on a five on three, you kind of feel sapped a little bit, and the other team ends up with that momentum. Yeah, it can't be a huge Ryan momentum shift. Uh, power Weaver, plays sometimes save. make the difference in a game, and a, a penalty kill can have just the same impact. 17.08 to go in the period. McNeil backhands it down the ice. Not quite all the way down, however. Sanguinetti goes far side now for Matt Smith. Around the boards, attack still control. Owen Sound has really built up a team poised to give the very talented London Knights a run in the Western Conference playoffs this year. It's the only way Owen Sound can get to the Memorial Cup is to win the playoffs and get to the OHL final. London's already booked their spot in that four-team tournament in late May. Now a giveaway. Here's Menino in on his own. Slips past Bissonnette. Off to the forehead and he scores. Tommy Menino took Mike Brown all the way across to the right post and fired it home. Menino's 16th goal of the season. And the former London Knight first round draft pick. Again, we talked about momentum swinging. Boy, Owen Sound goes from thinking five on three. Maybe we can get two goals out of this. Now they find themselves down one nothing as Saginaw scores on the first scoring chance they have. Yeah, that should be a, a, a huge boost for their bench. Uh, that was a really bad turnover by number 22, Sanguinetti, uh, at the blue line. And uh, he's definitely taken advantage of when they had that opportunity. And, uh, that is a huge momentum swing at the beginning of this game. The goal comes at 324. Tom Menino unassisted. And the Farmington Hills, Michigan native puts the spirit up 1-0. We'll see how Owen Sound responds to this. Puck back to center ice. Dumped in deep by Angelitas. Weaver will leave it behind the cage for Eric Lundmark, who's played some hockey in Michigan for some time. A Plymouth Whaler for three years. Traded to Saginaw earlier in the season. Now Kavapel. Gets his first real shift out there. Not usually playing on the PK, so we didn't see him out there until the Spirit could get back to full strength. Back check by Borges. Borges trips up Bobby Ryan. No call comes right in front of Ian Smith. Now it's tipped in right in front of uh, Mike Brown. Smith behind the net. He'll play it around the right wing boards for Ryan. Ryan decides to send it back as Berner put a big knock on Ryan. And Ryan is very slow to get up. Perhaps he's just seeing the puck on the other side of the ice. Now giveaway by Owen Sound in the slot. Pyatt tries to control. One-timer from Fletcher from the point, and Brown makes the save and skips it right into his glove. And boy, Bobby Ryan, a little slow to get up there. He has had some injuries. In fact, missed the All-Star game in Owen Sound on Wednesday. And you know, a guy has got to be hurt not to play in his own All-Star game in his own city. Yeah, I'm sure that uh, the, the nature of the injury hasn't uh, totally been disclosed or his uh, how he's healing. But uh, right there, it looked like he's a little slow to get up and maybe still feeling the effects of his injury. Now, Jeff, I know you're not you're not possibly suggesting coaches disclose injuries. That is, that is just not a possibility. <laughs> well, at our level, it's the best kept secret in the game. <laughs> upper body and lower body injuries, that's all they are. And sometimes the lower is the upper and vice versa. <laughs> yeah, you don't get real good answers on that. <laughs> that's flipped in down deep into Saginaw territory on Weber. He'll cover up and hold for a stoppage here. one nothing Saginaw. Menino with the goal, his fifth as a spirit, 16th of the season on the breakaway. Pat Jarrett and Tom Pyatt will tie up on the draw. Hyatt's line out now with Crowder, and also Michael Burner. Let's flip down the ice. Icing is the call. The rule's a bit different from the NHL. You kind of like the 
no touch icing uh, rule as opposed to the uh, the chasing in the NHL? Oh, definitely. I think the, the National Hockey League will go to it uh, within the next few years. I, I truly do believe because it's such a uh, difficult situation for injuries that uh, it's 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 a good rule that the OHL put in, and I think all amateur level games should definitely have that rule. Now and saved by Weber again off a point shot. Burner wants to bring it up the left wing side. That pass doesn't connect for Chase Crowder. Jared wanted to carry it in for the sound, but Le Lehun was offside. Now it's Kuverko who will send it back to his defense partner, Sakara, Buffalo Sabres draft pick. Burner grabs a loose puck behind the Saginaw goal. Off the skate of Pyatt. Pyatt couldn't get to that loose puck before Kuverko was able to keep it in. Now he retrieves. Tom Pyatt through the middle. Kavapel with a head of steam. Now McNeil didn't want to carry it in offside himself with Kavapel down deep. Now the puck pushed in and again, an offside call as Kavapel unable to tag up, and that's talk also. The NHL and the OHL will go back to a tag up offside rule so that once the guys are out, they can cruise right back in. That, that'll keep more flow as well. Let's go down to Scott Cool real quick, ice level. Yeah, real quick, we've got uh, Don Taylor, the vice president of Dow Chemical here with us. Don, you and your family get to drop out the first puck. That had to be a special honor today. Oh, it was, guys. A big thrill for myself, my wife Kim, and our four boys. And, uh, yeah, they were really excited about coming here and doing that today. So. You know, the fans here, they're so happy that Dow's involvement with this community, the Dow Event Center. I know at TV5, you guys helped sponsor our Dow School Spirit Award. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about how involved you are in the community right now. Well, you know, Scott, Dow's been a part of the mid-Michigan community for over 100 years now. Uh, we've got employees throughout the area in Bay City, Saginaw, as well as Midland. And it's very important for us to reach out to all of the mid-Michigan area and give back some of what the, the area has given us over the years. What's nice real quick, too, is that seeing the support that you get from the community and, and what you guys do, they kind of return that for you, don't they? Absolutely. It's a great connection for us here in mid-Michigan. We're proud to be a part of it. Hey, thanks, Don. We're going to send it back up to Greg for more of the action. Thanks very much, Scott. Spirit trying to control the puck in Owen Sound territory. They lead 1-0, 13.50 and counted to go in the first period. Lundmark will go back and chase in his own zone. A full-scale change for Owen Sound as they get five new skaters and ten new skates out there. Giblet will chase the puck down deep now inside the Sound's territory. Pinned into the boards a little bit by Theo Peckham, 17-year-old rookie defenseman. Now Aslan working with Gimlet. Gimlet tried to kick it free. Manino waiting on the outskirts. He's the goal scorer in this game. Now Gimlet does drag it free, looking to get it in front. Angelitas comes in, puts the body on Gimlet, and steals the puck away. Banks it off Manino's skate. Manino will flip it back towards the goal, but that deflected again, this time off Angelitas. Aslan tries in vain to keep it in. It'll be brought out by Kyle Lamb. Now Richardson knocked down by Aslan. Aslan slaps away at both Richardson and the puck. Now Lamb will carry in, but offside is the call against Owen Sound. We'll come back in just a bit. Saginaw, one nothing lead on Owen Sound here in the first period. You're watching Saginaw Spirit Hockey on TV5. Welcome back. Greg Brady, Jeff Jackson, Spirit up one nothing on Owen Sound on this Saturday afternoon. Great weather outside. It's like playoff hockey weather, but not a playoff game as of yet. But as you mentioned, Jeff, uh, Saginaw making a big push to get in playoff contention. And uh, getting points out of a team like Owen Sound, really a bonus. A team like Saginaw has to look at that way with a big game tomorrow in Windsor. Well, I saw them play uh, over a month ago, and, and they, they look like a transformed team. They're playing with a lot more uh, energy, and they seem to be uh, playing a lot better as a team at this point. I mean, I think they're playing real well defensively thus far, especially on that big penalty kill and maybe getting some confidence in their young goaltender, too. Yeah, if you're just joining us, a minute and three seconds of five on three Owen sound head. The attack couldn't score, and then the first shot on goal on Mike Brown, a breakaway by Tommy Menino after intercepting a pass, and he found a way inside the right post on the forehand for his goal. Now a giveaway there by Fletcher. Owen sound carries it in on side. That's Peckham. Peckham. Squeeze past McNeil, who missed the hit on him. Spirit played around the left wing boards. Kavapel. Kavapel, McNeil. Burner, slightly offside by a step and a half. And he exchanges, Burner exchanges a little uh, stick work with Bobby Ryan. 1230 will draw it back up offside on the uh, dot outside the Owen Sound blue line. Yeah, that was just a matter of. Uh crossing over before the, the blue line. Sometimes it's better to make a nice crossing pattern inside the blue line, but when you do that, everybody has a tendency to keep moving forward, and there's an offsides involved. Now Borges will draw up against Pat Jarrett. Draw one by the attack. Back to the blue line. Sakara controls there. 
Sakara will go far side, put it on the stick of Coverco, cutting through the middle. Harrison breaks up a pass intended for Jarrett. Jarrett gets it back. Corrente tries to cut off his lane. Now Jamie Clee back in the corner. Up to Coghill. Rick Coghill, former Mississauga Ice Dog, was a defenseman much of this season. Bob Mancini's converted him to a winger on this uh, kind of crashing and banging line with Tom Harrison and Dan Borges. And he's picked up three goals. He only had one before. Now tip play in front. Oh, boy, big collision between Derek Brochu and Jeff Weaver. Brochu had the helmet knocked off. Looked like a little bit he tried to pull up on Weaver, but the contact couldn't be avoided with Brochu trying to tip in a long outside lane pass from Brad Richardson. Yeah, that's just a matter of going to the net hard, and uh, I don't think there was much intention there to hit the goaltender, but uh, it was a pretty good uh, shot to the goaltender, and it uh, looked like the defenseman got him from the rear. Yeah, Klee just pushed in a bit tight on Brochu. No penalty gets called in that scenario. 11.57 to go. Draw will be to the right of Jeff Weaver. Borges again going up against Jarrett. This seems to be the line they want. Uh, Bob Mancini wants out there against one of Owen Sound's top scoring lines. Now the puck free to Harrison. Boy, that could have been called as Coverco tripped him up. Spirit power plays yet to see the ice. Now it kicks off Lee Hunt's skate. He stays on side. Clee a good hit into the boards there, and he finds the puck to boot. Now Coverco keeps it in for the point. That shot goes awry, wide of the right post. Around the board, Sakara gives it up to Harrison. He let it go through his skates. Now Harrison gets it back. Lee doing a number there on Lee Hun in the physicality department. Jarrett in the slot. Ruzichka. Ruzichka finds the puck again. Can't get the forehand away. Corrente hammers him down to the ice. Spirit have to play real aggressive against this line here, and they've been doing it. It's a lot of talent up there on the offensive side for Owen Sound. Now Harrison breaks up a pass. That was intended in front for Ruzichka. And now Borges will get it to Harrison, and it's sent down the ice. Spirit want a full-scale change themselves now. We played nine minutes in the first period. Here at a sold-out Dow Event Center. Spirit up 1-0 on Owen Sound. Now Ferguson, very talented rookie, up ahead to Crowder. Chase Crowder banks it off Coverco, down deep, tries to put it in the slot area. Ferguson overskated. Now it should be an easy clear for Colin Hanley. He gets it out to Kirizakos. Kirizakos struggles to get it in over the Saginaw blue line. Back to Sanganetti. McCann leveled Sanganetti there with a big hit behind the play. Perfectly legal but perfectly harmful if you're not ready for it and now the spirit will send it all the way down for an icing and Owen Sound we've talked about Saginaw's playoff position Jeff but they're in that precarious position impossible to catch the London Knights they're 19 points behind them but they've also got to look and make sure they avoid Kitchener in the rearview mirror very talented Rangers team 11 points behind them and they'll get a lot more value out of that third seed because they'd avoid a second round matchup potentially with London and I'm sure uh, Coach Struthers doesn't want his team going into this stretch run playing sloppy hockey. So it's more than just the standings for him. He wants to get his team geared up to play in the first round. And I think you know this better than anybody. Coaching in college, coaching the pros, coaching the OHL, you just want your team playing good hockey. That You'd give up a spot or two in the standings if you're playing well going into the playoffs, wouldn't you? Well, I think it's been proven with a lot of uh, different things like Calgary last year in the Stanley Cup playoffs. If you're playing well going into the playoffs, you can, do, you can beat any team. So... I think it's really key for Owen Sound to just stay focused on uh, trying to play the best they can each and every night. No question. Buck pushed by Hanley through the crease area. Weaver didn't have to make a touch in tight on it. Now it gets into the corner to the right of the Saginaw netminder. Aslan got hit from behind there by Igor Gongolski. And now a delayed call coming this time against Owen Sound. Spirit still controlling. They get the extra attacker out there. Burner was off the bench, but I don't think he'll win that skate race with Colin Hanley, who touches it up deep inside Owen Sound territory. So... We'll probably get a look at this here with 9.35 to go. Saginaw's power play takes to the ice the first time. And really a bit of a careless hit by Gondolski. It wasn't going to get him the puck any sooner. And to hit a guy from behind, you know a referee's going to call that every time if that's in his, uh, in his viewfinder, as it were. And if it wasn't a hit from behind, it was probably a cross check. But uh, I think the, the good play by Saginaw was advancing the puck up the ice so they have an offensive zone faceoff. That's a real smart play by them. Now Pyatt off the draw, couldn't win it, gets around the boards. Burner held up, but it'll be Gimlet who tried to keep it in. He banked it off of Lee Hun, and Lee Hun took a bit of a glancing blow there. Penalty is 11-15 to Igor Gongolski for a cross check. Now Pyatt into the zone. He's got a trailer. Burner, big shot, and Brown makes the blocker save. Kavapel gloves it back to himself, now to Gimlet. Important that... Kavapel got the stick on it before passing it off to Gimlet. Whistle would have blown otherwise. Now Gimlet, far side in his own zone, looking for Michael Burner, the St. Louis Blues draft pick from last summer. Off to McNeil. 
McNeil, the Strathroy, Ontario native, flips it down deep in Owen Sound territory. Smith around the boards for the attack, and he puts it over the high glass, so the draw will probably stay inside Owen Sound territory. That's something as well, isn't it? When you're killing penalties like Owen Sound, so big that you win the face-offs. You're giving yourself at least an extra 15, 20 seconds if you can win those draws. Yeah, there's no question. Face-offs and clears are probably the two of the minor things that people don't pay much attention to that have such a big impact on special teams. 8.50 to go, first period. Spirit win that face-off and keep possession. Corrente, Menino to McCann. Back to Menino. He's got the goal, unassisted. Earlier on in the period, in the fifth minute, actually. Lundmark takes a point shot. That deflected off a stick. Out down deep to Tommy Menino again. Menino trying to cut through the slot area. Lost the handle on it and sent back the other way by Owen Sam. Now Lundmark at center. Make sure he's on center to avoid the icing. In on Brown, and Brown plays it behind the net. One of the better puck-playing goaltenders. Saginaw fans know that for a fact. He is very smooth with the puck and doesn't tend to make too many errors outside that crease. Now Corrente, that pass, misfiring for McCann and by a good 10 feet. So now Owen Sound gets the bonus of an icing back in Saginaw territory. 34 seconds left in the Saginaw man advantage. And that icing was uh, just a matter of trying to advance the puck while Owen Sound was making a change, which is actually a good play, but it just wasn't a real sharp pass uh, up to the, the red line. Pyatt and Lehan on the faceoff. One back by the home team to Merrick Kavapel. He'll survey the situation. What an addition he has been to Saginaw. 49 points in 35 games and also had some good moments. Spirit go offside there. Pyatt to Kavapel was in a little too tight, but it's amazing. And you've seen this in the OHL. We've talked about it before. The European players bring such an injection of offense if they're uh, of the top caliber and can make all the players around them better. And that's exactly what Kavapel's done here. Well, there's no question the skill of uh, Kavapel is definitely a factor in helping uh, Sag uh, Saginaw making the turnaround that they've made here in the last month. And I think that uh, the European players do bring some skill to the league. And the league obviously benefits them as well from uh, learning to play the the, the tough schedule and the physical aspect of the game in the smaller arenas. If you're new to the OHL, only two European players allowed. Kavapel cut right through the slot. That shot may have deflected off of Brown. Now it's on top of the goal, and it was gloved in the crease area. That's a risky play there by Kyle Lamb, who put his glove on it in the crease, knocked it aside. But I think we're going to still have a stoppage here and a face-off in Saginaw territory, but that's probably exactly what the players are complaining about. You put your hand on the glove in the crease, it's generally a penalty shot. Well, if you covered in the crease, it is. I, I think that uh, he probably uh, didn't have his whole body over. It's hard to see, but that was a great move by Kavapel. Uh, taking that extra step on his forehand to the net, that's a real talented play. To patience uh, getting the goaltender to start moving and then trying to shoot against his grain. And the puck ended up right on top of the net, and Lamb may have picked it off there and thrown it back behind the goal. I'm not sure that uh, when the puck's on top of the net that that would be a penalty yeah, shot. I yeah. think it's more a matter of being in the crease. So still one nothing Spirit. They've got the, well, actually, the penalty just ended Owen Sound, so it's back to full strength. And you talked about the, uh, I mean, you're, you were a coach of a Guelph team that hosted a Memorial Cup. Talk about the pressure on the London Knights. Do they have pressure on them through the playoffs? Nobody wants to be accused of backdooring their way in. And this is a team also that's just lost four games in 50. I mean, we've hardly seen anything like it in recent years in the OHL. But how hard will they go for winning through the playoffs, knowing they want to keep everybody healthy for the Memorial Cup? Well, I think uh, Mark Hunter will probably make sure that his team uh, plays for more than just playing in the Memorial Cup. I know that we would have liked to won an OHL championship that year. So there's more uh, more at stake. I mean, winning the, the OHL championship in, in a lot of circles is just as important to getting to the Memorial Cup as uh, winning the Memorial Cup, that is the championship, and that's uh, something he's going to want his team totally prepared for by playing well in the, in the pressure situations of the, the OHL playoffs. And a lot harder grind, isn't it? You're talking an eight-week tournament, really, versus a, a tournament that's really over in the snap of a finger in five days. Well, and you also want to make sure that you don't have a prolonged period of time that you're off prior to playing in the Memorial Cup. So trying to get to the, the Memorial Cup final is going to be a crucial, uh, a crucial thing for, for London just so they're fresh going into the into the tournament and uh, and also have that game competitiveness that sometimes you lose if you take the time off. Owen Sound puts it in offside. Let's head down to ice level and Scott Cool. Scott. Hey, thanks guys. Yeah, joining me right now, we've got uh, one of the Billet family fathers, if you will, Brian Kitchnick. And Brian, uh, tell us who your, uh, your hockey player is. Uh, Matt Corrente, uh, number 13, plays defense for the Spirit. All right, now I think the question everybody wants to know, probably answered this one, how much does this kid eat? You know what? 
uh, they're, they're pretty good about, uh, they, they eat quite a bit, yeah. It's uh, very true. It's got to be a lot of fun, though, to that age and all the talent that this kid has, the future he has in front of him. I know he looks at a little guidance from the parents, even here. Right, and, uh, you know, Matt's a world-class uh, athlete, no, no question about it. He comes from a world-class family as well. So, uh, we're, you know, we're lucky to have him in our family, and uh, the, the uh, whole community is lucky to have uh, the Spirit organization uh, here, uh, putting these kids in our homes, and uh, they literally become part of the mid-Michigan community. Uh, Brian, we're lucky to have parents like you and families like you willing to take on the job of having these as billet kids. That's really a great idea. And thanks, uh, thanks again for uh, everything you do for this hockey team. We're happy to do it, Scotty. It's a great organization. All right. Hey, Greg, we're going to send it back up to you for more action. Thanks very much, Scott. Spirit in the... Own zone right now, trying to play it up the right wing boards, looking for Gimlet. It's poked away by Trevor Coverco. He's got a lot of ice time in this first period for Owen Sound. 1-0 the Spirit lead on Tommy Menino's 15th goal of the season. Sakari intercepts a Jamie Klee pass, comes in onside, and banks it off of Matt Corrente. Now it goes off the skate there of Ferguson. Back to the point. Jared keeps it low, and Weaver drops down, makes the save. 5.55 to go here in period number one. And we will break and come back. one nothing Saginaw. You're watching Saginaw Spirit Hockey on TV5. Greg Brady, Jeff Jackson, Scott Cool downstairs as well. He'll be talking to Merrick Kavapal at the end of the first period. And we're about 5.45, exactly away from that right now. Puck flicked into the stands. You know, I'm glad Scott asked uh, Brian Kitching that question about diet on the road because, you know, I'm telling you, Jeff, it is, it is almost impossible for a coach, a radio broadcaster, whomever, to keep up with these kids when they eat. I mean, the problem is I eat what they eat, but they've also worked off a lot more calories, so it doesn't look good on the waistline by the end of a season. Yeah, and the timing of <laughs> when you eat is also a factor because it's generally after a oh. game, and uh, obviously you have your pregame meetings or meals, but uh, I think that uh, the timing of postgame meals has an impact on us older folk. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the off season. My off season in the, in the summer is when I'm trying to get back into shape. I'm the opposite of these guys. Yeah, I am, I am as well. <laughs> Coverco keeps it in from the blue line. Action in front of the net. Weber tries to poke the puck to the corner. Succeeds in doing so. Jared will leave it there. Trying to get it in front to Lehan. One timer. Big save by Weber. Now it comes behind the net to Borges. A little interference run behind the play there on Klee, but it wasn't called. Now Borges will simply flip it down deep, and they get a change. Coverco wants to bring it up the left side. Dumps it off to Lehan. Lehan was headed off for a change as well, but he's got to stay on now as Pyatt intercepted that pass. Now Pat McNeil, Saginaw's representative at the All-Star Game this past Wednesday on the winning side as the West beat the East. It helps to have uh, 28 London Knights on that team, but uh, they won the game nonetheless. Now Brown will send it all the way down the ice. Icing's going to be called against the former Saginaw goaltender, and the draw will come back in Owen Sound's end. one nothing Saginaw, 441 to go in the first. And it appears that Saginaw has played a real smart game thus far. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, that icing is just an indication that they've got, uh, they've got Owen Sound a little frustrated. They really haven't had uh, tremendous scoring chances with the exception of maybe one or two on that five on three. Ferguson will line up for the draw. Couldn't win it there. Comes back to Bissonette. Bissonette's going to start it out. Up to Hanley, right wing side. Bissonette joins the rush. Hanley, though, chips it in behind the goal. Gives up possession. And Weaver finds a nice opening there for Chris Ferguson. Tape to tape to Chase Crowder. Here comes Crowder into the zone. Tried to make a move. Had it knocked away by Sanganetti. Now the puck stuck up high in tight on number 10, Igor Gongalski, for Owen Sound. He's taken the lone Owen Sound penalty. The attack 0 for 2 with a man advantage. Saginaw. 0 for 1, and neither Gungalski nor Ferguson can work out a solution to get the puck loose, so we'll face that off again inside Owen Sound territory with 4.10 to go. The more, more face-offs that end up in their zone, the better off for Saginaw, because that's obviously puck possession and having an opportunity possibly to score right off the draw, and as you can see here, it also gives uh, Coach Mancini an opportunity to make last change and maybe put a top line out on the ice uh, versus maybe one of Owen Sound's uh, lesser lines. That's a great point. That's where last change comes in handy, and you love it when your fourth line can keep that puck down deep. Now Pyatt thinking wraparound. He got tripped up and may have hooked his man down in the process. Pyatt from the side of the net pushes the puck wide of the right post. The shot was deflected there behind the net. Possession will come now to Karazakos. He'll find a lane out, but should be icing called against Owen Sound. McNeil, no. Didn't get there in time, the puck didn't. And McNeil got hit in tight, he is down after that uh, collision there with Gongalski. Now Kavapel, as McNeil gingerly makes his way to the bench, we'll keep our eye on when he's back out next. Fletcher comes on for him, gets the puck outside the Owen Sound zone, and Lamb will play it back on defense to Theo Peckham. 
Kavapel nearly with a steal. Now Hanley banks it off the linesman's skate, and it took a wild bounce. Weaver come out to play it, and it nearly stuck inside the left post. That would have been a really rough uh, equalizing goal to give up, and Lamb puts it in with Owen Sound offside. Boy, goaltenders, you can never leave a crease too early uh, the way they play it, but risky play by uh, Weaver. No one would have blamed him, though. Everyone expected that puck to go right around the boards. Well, I'm an ex-goaltender, and I can tell you straight out that I've seen some strange goals scored in my playing and coaching career, and many of them come off of referees or off the backboards on a funny carom, and, uh, you know, sometimes they even go off your own players. So yeah. you have to be alert, but uh, Weaver had no uh, no chance on that if it had uh, snuck by him. And that's a, that's a re really something that's changed in, in uh, the NHL and other leagues with the high glass all the way around. You used to see officials jump up on the glass because they could reach it, but... You know, you got to be Yao Ming to get up there now and uh, and get out of the way of the puck. Well, the dasher boards also used to be a little right. bit wider, too, so you could uh, actually wedge yourself up under the boards uh, to get out of the way of the puck. Now Menino trying to push it in front to Gimlet. He takes a spin-around shot. Missed the crease area. Menino nearly got it in front from Aslan. Takes a shot. Rebound chance. Gimlet whacks away at it there, but the Baldwinsville, New York native Mike Brown covers up in front of the crease area. Brown, a 19-year-old here. And be real interesting to see if he comes back for an OAC with Owen Sound. They got a lot of good 1985 board players. Rzichka, uh Richardson, Brown among them. Bissonette's another one. You see the uh, chance here just going wide by Gimlet through the crease area. Well, this league's all about building a team over three, four years, and uh, that's what Owen Sound has done. Uh, when I coached in the league, they were, you know, fighting for the playoff spot just like Saginaw is today, and uh, here they are, you know, three years later, and they're going to compete for an OHL championship and uh, it's just a three-year process and Mike Fuda has done a great job in building this team up to where it is today. Yeah it is tough unlike the NHL to be a consistent winner year after year after year it is, it is a very difficult thing and it's not even like college sports in this league where you're constantly getting the best recruits. Now Brochu cuts in for Owen Sound goes down to the ice attempted a wrist shot before he hit the ice he ties up Garrett Sinfeld. Sinfeld making his OHL debut today playing out there with Eric Lundmark wearing number 12. He played last night for the St. Thomas Stars Junior B team just outside of London, Ontario, and has now signed a deal with the Spirit that uh, will give him a great chance to make this team and be a big part of it in training camp in the summer of 2005. Kavapel down deep, tried to control, but Owen Sound breaks out. Jarrett into the zone. Fast-moving period here, just under 150 left in it. 1-0 Saginaw. Brochu. Behind the net, Borges does a good job tying him up. Rochu tries to backtrack the other way. Borges has him pretty much tangled up. Now, both Klee and Kavapel try to get that puck loose, but it comes back to the veteran Jarrett. Jarrett, pushed from behind by Borges. Can't get the puck back to the point. Now he does. Coverco takes the shot. Harrison does a good job. Closed the wickets there, and he blocked it from getting through to Weaver. Shots are 12-11, Saginaw in the hockey game. And flipped into the stands by Dan Borges. So Owen Sound gets a valuable faceoff with a minute 17 left. You want every draw you can get with uh, under 90 seconds or so to go here. No question. And that was a good shift by uh, Saginaw in the defensive zone coverage. They did a nice job of uh, containing containing people to the outside, really not giving much up. And uh, when they did get it out to the point, Harrison made a nice block and didn't let a shot through. Coming up at the intermission, Stephen Weissman with first period highlights. Scott Cool will have a chat with Mara Kavapel, the Spirits, import star. Burner on side, big shot, rebound chance for Pyatt, and Brown makes a spectacular save. Stretched out the pad, Pyatt from a bad angle, got that in a better chance on net than I, I think most people thought he would, even Brown may have thought he would, Jeff. Well, and the other thing is, too, I think that uh, Saginaw has to keep on staying a little bit higher on their rushes because uh, Brown has a tendency to give up rebounds, but he does it high in the slot as opposed to close in the crease area, so they have to have a third wave of attack there looking for those high rebounds, but that was a shot that was difficult for him to control. Now Hanley behind the net, just 38 seconds to go. Spear would like to clear and love to get out of this period with a 1-0 lead if they can't add to it. Pyatt down deep for Saginaw. McNeil's back out there, and that's a good sign. Owen Sound right through the crease area. Hanley was a blit on the periphery. Now a save by Weber that gets knocked to the corner. Gongolski pinned in by McNeil. He was the one that tripped up McNeil earlier, and caused a bit of pain, so those two with a near collision there. Sanguinetti with a turnaround shot that got past the crease. McNeil couldn't deflect it to the corner. And now with eight seconds to go, Spirit should be able to clear. Kavapel, does he sense how much time's left? We'll find out. Kicks it back to himself, couldn't carry it in onside, and a great job done by Paul Bissonette to hold up Kavapel, the blue line. That was an advantage there, wasn't it? Bissonette knew how much time was left in the clock. Kavapel didn't. 
and Benissonet able to take him to the corner and prevent him from getting in the zone. Well, he did a nice job with his gap, too. I mean, he was right in his face and just didn't give him the opportunity, but the play was del delayed at the blue line, and uh, there was a real effort to stay on sides. They've had a couple off sides, which had really hurt him on the rush. So the Spirit, happy where they are after 20 minutes, a 1-0 lead. Tommy Menino, an unassisted goal for the Farmington Hills, Michigan native, and Spirit dodging a real bullet with an Owen Sound 5-on-3 power play, the second best power play in the league, held scoreless by Saginaw. Now let's get down to Scott Cool, who's with number 14 for the Saginaw Spirit, Merrick Kavapel. And uh, we'll head it down to Scott right now, who's talking to the Spirit's hey, thanks, leading guys. scorer. Yeah, letting him catch his breath a little bit. This was an exciting first period, Merrick, and it was important for this team to get off to that one zip lead. Yeah, it was great. We scored first goal because uh, now it's game, now it's play on our side, and we must keep going and play the same game all the time. Does that take a little pressure off the team when you can get that first one, especially in a big game like today? Yeah, it was it was uh, it was tough until we scored first goal because every uh, Owen Sound they play really hard game and now they are a little bit little bit worse. And I think it's better when we score first goal. Kind of inspires the whole team in a situation like that. Brownie's playing tough in their net though. He's made a couple of big saves. Could be two nothing real easy. Yeah, yeah, we know Brownie is good goalie and we must keep going and try to beat him. So. Mark, uh, talk to me a little bit about this situation with a packed out house, a live event. Do the players have a little extra step in them, even though they had to play a game yesterday and last night? Uh, yeah, last night we lost and we, we, we just prepared on this game and everybody's just trying the best, best play and we're playing like a team and then that's it. We're just trying our best. Working that much harder because there might be a playoff spot hanging in the balance? Yeah, we must, we must play in the, Every game, every game on 100% and try to make playoff. It's only our our reason what we're playing. All right, Merrick, we're going to let you get some rest between periods. Yeah, Best okay. of luck for the rest of the game. Thanks, thanks. Merrick Kavapel joining us right now here between periods. And Steve, we're going to send it back to you in the studio. Been a great first period. Spirit off to that one zip lead, Steve. Fantastic. Great job down there, Scott. Spirit lead, like you said, one to nothing after one period of play. Now, coming up after the break, we'll have the highlights of the first half, first period of play, plus much more. Stick around. We're going to be right back. Got to be ready to go with the drop of the puck. All right, be ready to go. Go right at them. You know our systems. Just play with passion tonight. Should be no different than any other game. Today is no different than any other game. Make sure centers, we lock right up on those guys and play in his face. Borgie, Harry, Coggs, you know your job today. All right, you got to get in there physically. You got to shut them down when you're on the ice. Everybody ready to go drop the puck. Let's go, White. Big game. Come on now. Coach Mancini with the pep talk before the game. Now, I got to say the game is a little different than other games because, well, hey, it is live right here on TV5, but Bob Mancini getting the team ready, and it looks like it's been working. The Spirit holding off one of the league's best teams after one period. Let's get to the highlights right now. Spirit getting ready, set to go in front of that TV5 audience and a sold-out crowd early on. Two penalties, giving the attack a five on three, but Jeff Weber, Stone Cold's him. In front of the net, Weebs would come up huge. A little later, still on the power play. One shot, Weber says no. Second shot, Weber, uh-uh, not again. Jeff Weber, big guy in net, shutting out one of the league's top teams so far this afternoon. And then Spirit getting on the board a little later. Oh, the interception, Tommy Menino. DQ very much, scoring the lone goal for the Saginaw Spirit. It is 1-0 right now, Saginaw after one period of play. Tommy Menino, the Farmington Hills, Michigan native, coming through for Saginaw to get them to that lead. Well, an exciting first period of play as we come back here on set. Even more exciting things to come in the first intermission. After the break, I'll introduce you to a couple Spirit players that have traveled halfway across the world to pursue their dream of playing professional hockey. Stick it here. And welcome back. We're in the first intermission of play. Saginaw Spirit taking on the Owen Sound attack. Tommy Menino putting the Spirit on top one to nothing right now after one period of play. Now the OHL draws talent from all over the world. And while the Saginaw Spirit have quite the international flavor, we now introduce you to a couple of Czech players looking to become the next Yaramir Jager. From the Czech Republic to Saginaw, Michigan, Michael Berner and Mark Vopel have left everything behind to pursue all that they know, hockey. 
everything here is great and uh, with Marek play it's absolutely fun because uh, we play European hockey. It was tough in the beginning of the season but now it's 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 better than than a few months ago because I got Michael here and we talk Czech with, so it's better. And whatever they're saying, it's definitely working. Kavapa leads the team in all scoring categories, while linemate Berner isn't far behind. They're both very skilled. Uh, Mark is more of a natural goal scorer, and Berner plays both ends of the ice. I mean, he's good defensively, he's good offensively, he has good skills, and uh, they both play at a high tempo, which I think is very important for our team. But despite being so close to stardom in the States, it's still tough to be so far from home. <laughs> I miss my family a lot, <laughs> my girlfriend, so this is the toughest thing. But lucky for Michael, he's only got half that problem. Yeah, I had girlfriend, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I had, but that's all, <laughs> that's all. Well, girlfriend or not, Berner and Kavapel are a winning pair that hope to take Saginaw to the prom, I mean, playoffs, for the first time in franchise history. <laughs> So all you ladies out there, Michael Berner, single, looking for love. Unfortunately, Kavapel is already taken. Configures, right? Well, the second period is just minutes away. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Back live, Dow Event Center. Greg Brady, Jeff Jackson here, Scott Cool as well. Sagging up one nothing at the end of 20 minutes of play. And boy, Jeff, again, an early scare for the Saginaw Spirit. Two penalties within the first minute of the hockey game, and they find a way to get through it. Kill the five on three, and we both talked about the momentum boost that can give you. Boom, quick giveaway by Sanguinetti, and Menino goes in on Brown alone and gets Saginaw a big goal, gives him the lead. I'm not sure Bob Mancini planned it that way, <laughs> but as it turns out, uh, I think that uh, it ended up benefiting uh, Saginaw to give them get them into the game right away. And, and I'll have to be honest with you, from a coaching perspective, one of the worst things I always thought to start the game off was a power play, just because your guys aren't really into the game yet. They're really not as, you know, warmed up and have a feel for what's going on. So it can be a little difficult, and uh, as it was for Owen Sound, but uh, Saginaw did a good job, and uh, Weaver was uh, obviously the difference in that situation. Spirit got the rhythm after that goal. Let's uh, now send it down to a guy that uh, everyone can look up to, respect, and uh, thank at the same time. Scott Cool is down at ice level. Scott. Yeah, guys, you know, so often in the world of sports, we kind of throw out that word hero very easily. I have a true hero next to me right now, Timothy Schneikart. He's with the Marines. He's a corporal. And Timothy, where are you from, first off? Well, I was born here in, uh, right here in Michigan. I'm uh, living in Midland right now, though. Talk to me a little bit about being one of the first guys over in Iraq. I know that was your early mission. Yeah. Well, it was, a, it was a real trip at first. Um, the airstrikes coming in, the planes flying overhead. Um, we didn't know what to expect at first, but uh, things really worked out good for us, and uh, we came out on top every time. You know, athletes always talk about uh, kind of feeling it, the momentum building up, something like that. You had to feel it days before, I would imagine. Yeah, um, well, beforehand, it's a lot of uh, excitement, but during the actual battles and stuff, it's more calm than anything, so. Talk to me a little bit about the people back home and how important they are to a Marine that's overseas. Well, uh, the best thing you can ever do for a Marine overseas is uh, keep them stocked with a lot of fresh food, <laughs> a lot of good mail, and uh, a lot of good stuff coming in. Well, I tell you what, the other best thing that we can do as a community and people here is just thank you. Thank you and everybody like you for the job that you're doing for us. We appreciate you fighting for our freedom. It's my pleasure to fight for my country. All right, guys, we're going to send it back to you now. All right, thanks very much, Scott. It's a real honor to have Timothy here. They will honor him, uh, honor us the word verb to uh, get it done, uh, done with a uh, second period uh, ceremony to start things off. Spirit will start out front with Mara Kavapel, Tom Pyatt, and Michael Berner, and Jamie Klee, and Patrick McNeil patrolling the blue line. And uh, we've certainly talked to also, Jeff, about uh, possible draft picks. Bobby Ryan is one, Patrick McNeil's another. Mara Kavapel could be a 19-year-old that could end up on uh, an NHL roster. But real up in the air with the NHL lockout right now, and I know as an assistant coach for the New York Islanders, it's, uh, it's a tenuous situation, not even knowing for uh, general managers, Mike Milbury, your general manager, as to whether or not there will be an NHL draft this summer. It's, uh, it's got a lot of people guessing right now. I spent last night uh, up in Sault Ste. Marie uh, with our head Ontario scout. He was telling me that uh, they expect uh, that there will be a draft some point before September of next year, although it may not be in June like it traditionally is. 
And uh, if they if they weren't to have a draft, I mean, it would definitely have an impact on the Ontario Canadian Hockey League, uh, every every level of uh, of hockey where players get drafted from. But uh, from what he told me, is it sounds like there will be something over the summer uh, for this class of draft picks. You've coached some real talented players uh, in, in Guelph, uh, let alone with uh, guys like Daniel Pae, Dustin Brown, who get drafted. Do you find that's ever a distraction as a head coach? Do you need to refocus them and say, look, if you keep doing what you're doing, not think about the NHL, it's going to work out so much better for you than trying to impress a certain scout that's in the building or play you know, better in a different arena than another? Does it ever get to be distracting for these guys? Definitely. Uh, it, it, is a, it is an issue. I mean, you are dealing with 17-year-old young men. Uh, they have a lot of people talking to them, a lot of people talking about them. Uh, it's their first real opportunity to gain a lot of exposure through the media and uh, there is pressure on them and uh, sometimes their parents sometimes agents have an impact uh, in making that pressure even more intense but all in all I think it's uh, it's something that helps them develop uh, just going through that process set to go second period of play here spirit will be going left to right on your television spirit hockey on TV 5 on this Saturday afternoon Owen sound controls off the draw Ryan will dump it down deep and speaking of possible draft picks in 2005, Patrick McNeil down deep, the first ever player taken in the uh, OHL draft of 2003 by the Spirit in their second year in existence. Kavapal around the back end to McNeil. McNeil banks it off of Ryan Skate. Spirit having some trouble clearing right now. Now Pyatt gets it to Kavapal. Kavapal again has a deflect off Pyatt Skate. Klee with a big hit on Richardson, steps up. Gets physical. Now Burner trying to move it. Squeezes through. Here's Pyatt. Burner races for the net. Spirit have numbers here. Pyatt gets it in front. Burner scores. What a beautiful touch pass by Tommy Pyatt. Finds Michael Burner. Burner skates right to center ice. Well, Terrell Owens there, Jeff. If you're the opposing coach, you're not too fond of that move, but it's 2 0 Saginaw. No, you have to be careful with the uh, post goal move. It was a great play by Pyatt, but uh, I think afterwards you have to enjoy the goal, but uh, whatever you do, you never show the other team up, and that can come back and haunt him. Uh, I think it might be best to send out uh, Officer Thomas Harrison out there with Murder next time just to make sure. What a beautiful play. 40 seconds in, Tom Pyatt with a gorgeous pass. And I'll tell you, Jeff, the two Europeans have got a lot of attention for what they've brought here in flashy style of play. But Tom Pyatt, a 17-year-old, such great hockey lineage. His father, Nelson Pyatt, his older brother, Taylor Pyatt, who's played uh, both with the, the Islanders and now with the Buffalo Sabres. And Pyatt, uh, boy, he's got a great future ahead of him with plays like that. And it's uh, impressive to see how he's developed, how he's come along over the last uh, couple months. Because when I saw him last time, he was a little more tentative. And now he looks like he has some confidence. And like I said, I mean, other players, you bring in players that have the right attitudes and uh, you get good goaltending. Those kind of things help teams develop their confidence. And uh, he showed a lot of uh, uh, savvy with that puck and made a nice cross crease pass uh, on a goal that Brown had little chance. Now, let me ask you this. Mike Stuthers just had a long conversation with Ian Smith. Could he have been arguing perhaps an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty? Should have been given to Burner? What do you think that discussion could have been about? Uh, it very well could have been. Uh, and uh, it also could have been a potential offsides at the uh, blue line. I'm not sure what he was discussing, but uh, it took a little time for the referee to handle it, and uh, obviously it, it won't impact the score of the game. Well, it's easier to get away with a move like Burner just did at home than on the road because, boy, oh, boy, would you incite the fans in the other building by doing that. Now it comes up to Coghill. He's going to skate out left wing side, gets run into a bit by Sakara. Harrison will dump it in to Owen Sound territory. Spirit in 11 previous meetings with Owen Sound have never beaten them. They've got an overtime loss to their credit from earlier this season in a 4-3 defeat up in Owen Sound. Last time in this building, Mike Brown playing only a second game, not in a Saginaw uniform. Got the attack of 4-1 victory here. Now Lundmark fighting against Jared in neutral ice, trying to pit it into Owen Sound territory. Gimlet gets it back to... Number 12 for Saginaw, Garrett Sinfeld, as mentioned, playing his first game in a Spirit jersey. Now turnover by Owen Sound, deep off Coverco's stick. Lundmark will get the point shot away, blocked there at the uh, hash mark area by Sakara, and he'll race out over the Saginaw blue line. Long wrist shot, Weaver makes the blocker safe. Off to Menino's stick, he couldn't control. Now Ruzichka will go down deep, tying up with McNeil, and McNeil does a good job transitioning back on the right side to Lundmark. That pass for Gimlet a bit behind him. It'll go all the way down the ice for icing. And another quick goal by Saginaw in a period. This one by Michael Burner. Spirit up 2-0. We played 2.07 in the middle frame here. 
Owen Sound looks like they're trying to pick up their intensity level. That goal didn't help them, but uh, they are starting to skate and pass the puck a little bit quicker up through the neutral zone, which I thought they had a real difficult time doing in the first period. Off the faceoff to the right of Weber. One back, Lamb will get the wrist shot away. That whistled past the left post. Weber made a move towards it, but didn't have to get a body on it. Now Menino trying to flick it out up ahead. Too far for Ferguson. Owen Sound back the other way. This is dangerous. Here's Akos, takes the shot up high. Weber went down. The puck kept rising and went over the crossbar. Now Gimlet trips up his man in the corner. It'll come around the boards for Fletcher. Gimlet still tied up, I believe, with uh, Patrick Jarrett. Jarrett lost his helmet. He's got, or that's Peckham, rather. He's got to head to the bench, as you can't play without a helmet, unlike in the NHL. Now cutting through the slot area is Gongolski. Gets it right to Karazakos, who set up a screen nicely with Brochu, but Weber saw through it and made the stop. Now McNeil down deep. You mentioned Owen Sound's intensity rising, Jeff, and that's certainly something that's transpiring, judging from this shift. Down deep as well to Angelitas. He's tied up by Scott Fletcher, the rookie from Hazlitt, Michigan. It goes around the boards. Gimlet should have an opening to clear. That's exactly what he'll do, sending it off the boards all the way down the ice. And that a real mercy icing. Owen Sound continuing to cycle and transition the puck in the spirit, fortunate to get it down the ice without more scoring chances in on Jeff Weaver. They weathered the storm pretty well, but uh, you know, Owen Sound is doing a nice job down low below the goal line, cycling the puck down low. And you know, if they continue to do that, what happens is it either fatigues the other team or they, they eventually make a mistake that leads to a goal or a penalty against them. Now the big line out for Owen Sound, Richardson, Ryan, and Angelitas. Angelitas will come in and take the face off after Richardson politely ejected from the dot. Crowder trying to work it out of the corner, as is Pat Aslan. Aslan, a Peterborough, Ontario native, trying to play it around the boards. Richardson has him tied up, and the helmet <laughs> lost again, this time by Angelitas, and he'll have to head off. He didn't like the way Crowder took it off him, but no call came from Ian Smith. Now Lehan, down deep for the sound. Transitions to Ryan. Jamie Clee will backhand it up the boards to Joe McCann. Point shot came in tight. Aslan blocked it off the stick of Kyle Lamb. Now still not out. Lamb steps right in. Big shot in tight through the midsection of Jeff Weaver, and he'll hold on and make the stop. And boy, we look at Bobby Ryan. Such good hands, and such good skill with the puck. Saginaw's doing a real good job tying him up in the corners and not letting him skate out with the puck. And it looks like it could be part of Owen Sound's game plan to play down low uh, against Saginaw's young defense, but. Thus far, they've handled it pretty well, and uh, Owen Sound is starting to generate some shots from it, but thus far, they just uh, they just keep putting it into the uh, crest of uh, Weaver. Now Kavapel off the faceoff. He's handcuffed. Jarrett gets the puck loose, cuts in front, and it's knocked away by Eric Lundmark. What a nice play. He'll come up and join this rush with Burner. Burner down the right wing side, dumps it in. He's going to chase after his own dump in behind the net. Tried to tie up Brown. Now Pyatt who set up Burner with a gorgeous second period goal, tried to keep it in. It's set all the way around down the ice by Owen Sound, and will draw it up again inside the attack territory. You talk about youth on defense, Jeff, and you probably, through uh, years of coaching the OHL, you probably have seen this, a 19-year-old, two 17-year-olds, and three, or excuse me, three 17-year-olds and two 16-year-olds. Not too many defenses are that young ever in the OHL. And that's probably the most difficult position to play in the Ontario Hockey League, and finding good quality ones is uh, not an easy job, but uh, I think it speaks volumes for the future of this team. Now Pyatt behind the net. He's trying to struggle loose and get away from Bissonette. Bissonette gets the puck loose. Burner, almost a bit of a slew foot. He got away with it, however, as he took Bissonette out from behind. Up to Giles on the left wing side for the attack. He's pinned in tight. Burner comes back with a big hit again. Now Weber around the boards. Lehun breaks that up. Sinfield has it behind the net. He's tied up by Giles. Giles trying to get it loose. All alone in front is Jarrett. In on himself. And a great save by Weber. Still loose puck. It goes to the corner. No one was quite sure where that was. Least of all, Jeff Weber. But he got enough of it to push it wide of the left post. Burner will flick it out. Won't be far enough for icing. And the Welland, Ontario, native Bissonette was going to go back and chase. Brown decided to come out and play it up ahead to Bissonette to Giles at center. Both teams changing. Giles. Wrist shot, well wide of the left post. Around the boards it comes. Harrison's got to get on his horse to get it out. He didn't get there soon enough, and Sakara broke it up to keep it in. Thomas Harrison gets it back. Plays it off a skate of an Owen Sound player who touched it up and came in offside. You see again with again with Burner there. I think we'll take a look at this scoring chance with uh, Weber in tight. Patrick Jarrett all alone. Yeah, it's, a, it's actually a great play by Weber, but he loses the puck, and I, don't, I think he thinks it's between his pads before... Uh, uh, Owen Sound picks it up for a good second scoring chance, and 
You know, you're right now he's being tested a little bit more severely than he was in the first period. Spear win the face off. One back to McNeil. Puts a bullet along the ice for Menino. Menino and Gongolski got tied up looking for the puck. They still are. As they try and drag it loose, Aslan comes in to assist. It does get free now. Menino drags it over the Owen Sound blue line, but stripped of it by Andre Sakara. Good pass there. Gongolski, two Owen Sound players into the zone. Gongolski, shot. And a blocker saved by Weaver once again. Likes to use that blocker on the right hand. Now a little pop fly comes in. Coverco put it on net, and he makes the save. We talked about Michael Berner and the goal scoring, but we saw in that last shift before some big hits, and rare that you see those European players that want to engage. I know that they've come a long way in getting rid of that reputation with players in the NHL like Peter Forsberg and, uh, and other players like that who love playing physical, but uh, Berner really a guy that enjoys it, it looks like. Well, I think that that happens in every country. I mean, you have your finesse players, and most of the players from Europe, Europe are recognized uh, as uh, as skill players, but uh, there are the, the tougher physical guys as well. Now, what we had here was the puck go in. Owen Sound is celebrating like they've scored, and have they? It was a loose puck right in front of Weber, and they're going to count this goal. That happened very quietly, just right off the faceoff. And Saginaw throwing up some degree of protest, but the draw is coming back to center. Oh, you see it did slip by. Gungalski put a touch on it. That's a great angle by our cameraman there because it was tough for us to spot. It looked a very innocent play that Weaver had covered up. And the uh, the Saginaw players uh, got caught on the wrong side of the uh, guy playing the rebound there, and then he actually poked it through uh, Brown uh, Weaver's pads. Yeah, so not an issue. Certainly a goal, but like you said, Weaver, who thought he had the previous play tied up, thought he had that one tied up as well, and it had already slipped past him. Again, a great angle by our camera man on uh, that particular play. Now Sakara down deep for Owen Sound. The goal is going to be credited to Sakara with the assist to Kirazakos. And it's 2-1 Saginaw. We'll come back and uh, figure out where the Spirit go from here. The lead is cut to 1-2-1 one. One Spirit. You're watching Saginaw Spirit Hockey on TV5. Welcome back, Spirit lead 2-1 on Owen Sound. And we get another look at this here. Hanley's waiting on the periphery, and the puck just squeezed behind Weaver's pads. And it looked as though Sakara, who was pinching in, may have got the goal because also on the doorstep was Derek Broshu. But like we said, a goaltender, you know, 99 times out of 100 nearly has that, and it's a, a whistle. But uh, the puck clearly had crossed the line, and uh, no controversy there whatsoever. Well, we didn't hear the whistle on it, yeah. though, either, so it's hard to really say uh, where the whistle came to play. But uh, all in all, it's probably a good TV timeout right here. I know coaches like those in situations like this where Owen Sound's picked up a little momentum, and... Uh, Hopefully the timeout will uh, help uh, get Saginaw back into the, the same level of play that they were in the first. By the way, Hanley and Berner got tied up as we uh, went to break and uh, both got roughing calls after the whistle. So we're playing four on four hockey now. At 5.53 the penalties come. Sakara pinned in tight by Pyatt right in front of the Owen Sound bench. He's trying to get loose. He'll go far side now to Angelitas who's got some room on the left wing. Angelitas trying to squeeze past Lundmark. Lundmark does a good job holding him in tight. Angelitas, though, a big boy, 6'1", 220, tries to get that puck loose. Now it'll come to Pyatt. Pyatt to Corrente. Corrente off to Lundmark. Lundmark's got Kavapel. Kavapel finds the puck in the zone and poked to the corner by Brown. Now a loose puck goes side of the goal, brought out by Owen Sound. Good chance and good job by Lundmark to try and get it up ahead to Kavapel, who just never really had a clear path to the net to settle the puck down. Now Lundmark nearly a giveaway in front to Angelitas. Poked away by Richardson, it comes free to Lundmark. Lundmark's gonna start off this rush again, trying to flip it through to Kavapel. Carried it in, offside was Kavapel. Back the other way, three Owen Sound players. And it's shot down deep in the corner where Reber will fire it around the boards to Gimlet. It kicks back to Owen Sound's control. That shot by Jarrett got deflected wide into the corner. Menino dumped down by Lehan. Jarrett back to the point, neither Bissonette or Lamb could get there. That was like two outfielders, really. You take it, no, you take it, and neither guy got over there to keep it in the zone. Now Manito, boy, he had a lot of room to come in, but he overskated the puck. Here's Lee Hunt back the other way for Owen Sound. 2-1 Saginaw. Puck played through the crease area. We've got just over 12 minutes to go in the period. Now Jarrett tried to pass it back the other way. McNeil able to keep it in, staying on side, and dumps it down deep. Manino and Gimlet are up front for the Spirit. Broken up by Owen Sound, back the other way. Good pass, Sanganetti to Lee Hunt. Lee Hunt far side for Jarrett. 
Jarrett along the right wing. Tips it in front, and that just deflected awry of the left post. Man in the slot all by himself. Sanguinetti, rebound chance. Weaver covers up. And boy, a coverage problem there right in front of the Saginaw net. And no goal goes on, but I'll tell you, if you're the head coach, Bob Mancini, you're marking that for your mental notes to show that uh, when you look at the video tomorrow and say, guys, we can't leave a guy that open on a four-on-four -four here. Well, part of, it's, part, part of it is a four-on-four, -four, and I think that uh, Owen Sound's really moving quickly up the ice and uh, coming through the neutral zone with speed. And down deep in the defensive zone here, you can see that uh, basically the Owen Sound players gain body position on uh, the Saginaw players. And, it's almost like basketball when uh, you're trying to box out and, and in around the net for rebounds, and that's what uh, Owen Sound had, the offensive rebound there, basically because they were in better position. Yeah, and Jarrett just simply couldn't put it home. That's unlike him as well. He's got such smooth hands around the net, but he couldn't get a handle on the uh, Sanguinetti rebound chance that Weber kicked out. Now Bissonette puts it towards the goal. Team's back to five on five, and Weber hangs on to make the save. Let's head down ice level. Scott cool has got more. Yeah, guys, we got Terry Johnson, and Terry got to ride the Zamboni between periods. Talk a little bit about that, Terry. Oh, it was great. It was a blast. It was fun to actually be on the opposite side of the glass on the ice, looking around and seeing all the fans having a wonderful time today. Terry, you work with the Dow Corporation, and we were talking during the break a little bit how important it is Dow getting back into Saginaw a little bit, too, not just kind of Midland base. Well, Dow's been here for 107 years. And we have employees and retirees all through the mid-Michigan area. So it's very much important to the company to be part of the whole mid-Michigan area. Got to make you feel good, too, being a Saginaw native. I did. I grew up here in Saginaw. And I've seen this facility go through a lot of opportunities. And it's a wonderful place right here. So it is a real exciting and proud moment. Real quick, riding the Zamboni, would you like to do, like, figure eights or something? I think we should make designs on the ice next time. Spoken like a woman. No, I'm kidding, of course. <laughs> Thanks, Terry. Thank Thanks for you. joining us. Guys, back up to the action. Thanks very much, Scott. Puck pushed into the corner. Spirit want to get it outside the zone. Owen Sounds had the pressure down here. Let's see if Coghill can get something done. He overskates, and Smith will push it back the other way for the attack. Corrente, far side for Klee. Klee try to squeeze it through a couple. Owen Sounds skaters broken up by Angelitas. He's got numbers. Try to push it towards the net. Klee will send it back up the boards. And now Coghill will get a second chance to clear the zone and does this time. Up to Harrison. The Saginaw captain over the blue line. Heads for some open ice on the left side. Bad angle shot. Brown got a piece of it. I don't think that was going in, but a rebound chance certainly was there if a Saginaw forward was in the vicinity. Now down deep, some pushing and shoving. Harrison pushed up high back on Theo Peckham, and he got called very early in the hockey game, Jeff, for something similar. He's got to keep his cool, understand the spirit with the lead. Don't want to put this very good Owen Sound power play back on the ice. Yeah, and a face wash will be the first thing that the referee <laughs> tends to call after, uh, after a little strum like that. But uh, the one thing I've noticed, uh, especially in this period, is it seems like you were talking about playoff uh, weather outside. Playoff weather may be having a little bit of an impact on the ice because it uh, seems like there's been a lot of bouncing pucks, a lot of pucks uh, taking weird hops and that, and that's what happens when, when it gets warm outside, the conditions inside get a little warmer, and sometimes the ice gets a little bit uh, uh, shavy, and uh, all of a sudden there's... Uh, Weird bounces going on. You're right, actually. Both teams' skill players, the more I think about it, having a struggle to control the puck. Now it bounces back to the point. Lundmark takes a shot that pinballs back into the corner. Coverco has it taken away by Kavapel. Kavapel to Pyatt to Burner down low. Now kept in by Sinfeld. Sinfeld to Burner. Kavapel up high. We'll flick it there. Burner, I think, zigged when he should have zagged, and Pyatt had to retrieve the puck out of the corner. He's tied up tightly by Andre Sakara. And though the puck squeezes past, a little interference being run on Lehan by Sinfeld. And the puck pushed offside by Owen Sound. 10.08 to go now, second period, a 2-1 Saginaw advantage. Well, they could use a few more shifts like that. Uh, Saginaw actually did a nice job deep down in the offensive zone. And uh, I think that that's what they have to do to try to get the momentum back in their game. And here they're making the change. But I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, Coach Mancini come right back with this Pyatt line in the, the very near future. They like to get him out there. You're right on the money as far as faceoffs go in Owen Sound zone. You'll see them far more often than you won't. Crowder will go retrieve a puck inside Spirit territory. A lot of hockey lineage there with Keith Crowder, the former Boston Bruin and L.A. King, who won the Memorial Cup back in uh, 1978 with Gary Green as the head coach. We'll come back right after this. Saginaw with a two.
Welcome back to One Saginaw over Owen Sound as the Spirit on home ice on this Saturday afternoon. They'll head to Windsor tomorrow, play a pretty important game against the Windsor Spitfires. One of the three teams really now they're trying to chase for the final two playoff spots. Someone's going to be left out in the cold come mid-March. Owen Sound controls inside Spirit territory. Fletcher ties up his man in the corner. That's Gongalski. Now kept in, however, by Sakara. Steps in, big slap shot, and that whistled wide of the right post. Over to get it from the corner. Coverco in front, bouncing puck. Hanley controls. Weber covering that post, makes the save. Hanley gets it back. Tied up by McNeil in the corner. Fletcher waiting for that puck to get loose as well. Gongalski found a way to get it free. Puts it on the stick of Kirazakos. Kirazakos bothered by Aslan, so he'll dump it off to Gongalski. Now McNeil finds a route on the right side, up to Menino. Menino can't get it out, second chance. Perhaps will, and I think a collision behind the play as Fletcher was really tied up with Gongalski, but I don't think anything called per se. Maybe it's both guys that are gonna go, and we'll get more four on four hockey here with 9.09 to go in the second. The big thing thus far uh, in this period has been Owen Sound's uh, experience up front uh, against the inexperience of Saginaw. I think that uh, they're really trying to emphasize playing down low and trying to take advantage of beating these young defensemen out of the corner, and, and Owen Sound's had more scoring chances as a result of it. It looks like uh, that Mike Struthers might have had a little chat with his boys about uh, getting more into this game, and thus far they've been really uh, the better team here in the second period. Off the faceoff, Pyatt will tie up with Richardson just inside Spirit territory. It's one back to Sinfeld. Sinfeld tries to push it up for Cavapel, but Sanguinetti beat him to the puck. Off to Bissonette now. Bissonette and Sanguinetti have played together most of this season and look real comfortable now. Bissonette, of course, coming to Owen Sound in late November. Mike Brown following a week after. Two key players from Saginaw in previous years, but maybe uh, trades that have worked out well for both teams. Spirit have certainly not complained about how they've played the last few weeks. Now loose puck in front of the Saginaw net. Angelitas hunts in for the rebound, as does Richardson, but covered up underneath Patrick McNeil and throw a few other players in there as well. Let's throw it down real quick to Scott Cool, who's got another guest. Guys, indeed, joining me right now, Matt Tyson. And Matt, you're with this uh, school, Adopt-A-School program. Talk a little bit about that. Sure, I work with uh, Meyer & Associates Financial Group in, in the college planning department. What our basic goal is here is to uh, promote kids in education and um, with that give them, some, give them some incentives, I should say, about uh, you know basically doing well in school and also incorporating that, incorporating that with uh, adopt a school here. We're allowed to let some of these kids come to, come to some of the games and basically, you know, if they're doing well in school, then they can go forward and, you know, we can give them some incentive here at the games and hand them out some Dow Bucks and things like that. Yeah, so, Dow Bucks and season tickets and to season get good tickets to the game. That's nice. Absolutely, absolutely. From there, we like to keep it in the community here. We do a lot throughout the community with Myron Associates and helping out through, you know, we have a charitable foundation that gives to um, basically scholarships. We're going to away $21,000 scholarships to graduating seniors this year in the Tri-Cities alone. Um, from there, we also do creative for caring, the Johnny Burke Children's Foundation with the Corvette Raffle. Um, you know, adopt a family and also a couple other things throughout the community to help out as much as we can, mainly in the kids' in the kids' focus. So. Great work being done and you're putting a smile on a lot of kids' faces. Absolutely. We appreciate that, Matt. Thanks we for joining us tonight. Thanks a lot, Scott. Let's throw it back up for more action. Guys, take it away. Thanks, Scott. Jared into the zone now for Owen Sound. Cruising in, gets the shot right through the crease, and I think that tinged, if you will, off Jeff Weber's skate. Now the pass up ahead. Boy, that was almost a three-line pass for Merrick Kavapel from Pat McNeil. It didn't necessarily connect, and We'll draw it up back inside Spirit territory. And four on four, this is where it's also risky for Saginaw because Owen Sound, a little more skill and depth on their team. So the more open ice some of these guys have, the more dangerous they are. Certainly, I mean, I don't think it's a matter of just the skill level. I think it's as important the experience that they bring to the table because they've had guys that have gone through this uh, for two and three years now, and uh, they know how to take advantage of the, the four on four, turning it into a four on three and, and breaking it down to a two on one in some situations. Now Brown comes all the way out to bail out Sakara. Now Owen Sound, a three-on-one. Jarrett's headed for the goal. Gets the puck. Tip play in front. Great work by Klee. And he tied up Jonathan Lehan. But I'll tell you something. You talk good penalties and bad penalties. That was an excellent penalty to take. I'm not even so sure it was a penalty. But Jamie Klee, you see right here, absolutely has to tie this man up because Lehan's putting that into a wide open net and tying the hockey game if he doesn't. Yeah, there's no question it was a good penalty, but it all resulted back at near the red line area where there was a a mix-up on a change uh, by Saginaw where 
Uh, one defenseman got on the ice late, and they almost had a pure two-on-one right before that scoring chance. So uh, I think the, the, the trying to make changes based on who's on the ice, and in that situation, uh, could have been a bit of a problem for them off that change. So interference called on Jamie Klee. 12.45's the call. Now coming out of the box will be Gongowski and Fletcher. But right now, four on three. Spirit win the faceoff, flick it out towards center ice. And the very talented Sakara, who really set up that scoring chance again for Owen Sound. He's got the Owen Sound goal. Angelitas in tight. And now Brown got run, or I should say, Weaver got run into a little bit, and it all kicks off. Richardson got paired up with Weaver, and I think Weaver wants to grab him from behind. And you rarely see this in the OHL, and there's, of course, very strict rules. Angelitas is going to look to get a shot in on McNeil, and there's no way the Spirit players want to let that happen. Angelitas, uh, known as a big power forward enforcer, and McNeil, a real skilled player, but those two tied up and are going to push and shove and talk for a bit. But Jeff, very strict rules in the OHL regarding getting into a second fight after one has started, and something every player on the ice, I think, has it in the back of their mind wanting to avoid. Well, and that all resulted from the hit on the goaltender, and uh, that one looked like it could have been, uh, he could have pulled up a little bit better on than the first time. I think that, uh, you know, it was a nice play going to the net, but I think he went uh, almost uh, almost in a cross-checking motion right to the goaltender's chest as he fell into him. So that's what caused the the, uh, the problem in the first place. And uh, hopefully the referee will take a look at that and, uh, you know, and understand why the whole, the whole fight broke out. And uh, by the looks of it, I think that uh, there won't be anybody removed from the game. But... Uh, there, it might have been a roughing and a second fight, but to a fight and a, and a roughing penalty go, to go along with it. Well, it's interesting. Richardson and Angelitas are both in the box, and McNeil's the lone Saginaw player in. Of course, Klee was already in. His penalty had started, and only 12 seconds ticking off the clock. So, and I, I think perhaps the referee in Smith also saw that nothing happens. Weber gave Richardson a shot, but more often than not, those forwards, if you run into a goalie, you'll take a little shot from the goalie and then get out of the crease. It's rare you see a forward punch right back, but that's exactly what the veteran Brad Richardson did there. Well, and I think that's why uh, you're going to see Owen Sound get the additional penalty here because uh, right now, I think, uh, in all levels of hockey, but specifically in the Canadian Hockey League, National Hockey League, there's such an emphasis on, uh, you know, taking liberties with the goaltender because generally they're in prone positions as they're making a save. They're, you know, they're on their knees or on their back and uh, potentially could have a major injury if, uh, if they're not protected by the officials. So Spirit looked like they get a, a real benefit here. The draw is coming outside the zone because obviously the Owen Sound defender is pinched in to help out in that scrum where no fighting majors result. McNeil gets two for roughing, and Angelitas and Richardson each get two for roughing. So you're exactly right, Jeff. We'll go four on four for the next minute and 48. And I'll tell you what, though, that really takes it, makes it tough for both Bob Mancini and Mike Stuthers. It takes the flow out of the game where you can be rolling four lines because we've seen a lot of four-on-four four hockey this period so far was still 7.02 left to go. Well, and I think that uh, people say that four-on-four four hockey is uh, more entertaining than five-on-five. Five. I think we've seen some good scoring chances in these situations, but uh, I think that uh, the skill really starts to show up when they have additional room and uh, time to make plays, and thus far, Owen Sounds had uh, the better opportunities in these four-on-fours. Fixing some of the ice right in front of the Saginaw net. McNeil is in the box for two. And Angelitas and Richardson for two each. They've yet to put the penalties up on the scoreboard. But you know that's a matter of time. Although Owen Sound has five skaters on the ice, so this is a little strange to me. Perhaps they'll both play five on five here. No, they won't. Fletcher's going to come in. Did he get a roughing penalty as well? That's very interesting now. So Owen Sound is not shorthanded out of this situation, and they'll keep their power play. So Fletcher gets the roughing penalty along with McNeil, so the referee decides to go even up. Owen Sound controls with the man advantage from the original Klee minor penalty. Lee Hun from the point now. Flicks it over the stick of Burner. It gets down deep, now back to Ryan. And Ryan, or I should say, or Jared makes a reverse pass too far for Lee Hun to keep inside the zone. Now Brown's down deep, he'll send it all the way around the boards. Hustling hard is Dan Borges, who tries to kick it down low to Burner. Burner finds a loose puck. Burner a goal scorer in this period. It's been Menino and Burner for Saginaw. And back the other way, Andre Sakara for Owen Sound. Drop pass Ryan in the slot. Looks to get it up high. What a backhand move by Bobby Ryan. He just slowed the game down to the exact pace he wanted to. His 27th goal of the season, a power play goal. 
and we talked about keeping that Owen Sound power play off. It was a matter of time before Bobby Ryan made an impact on this game. Jeff, quiet so far, not anymore. Owen Sound's tied it up. Well, it's difficult for players to come back off of injuries, but I'll tell you what, this is an NHL goal because this guy brought the puck to his backhand, showed tremendous patience, and uh, the goaltender had absolutely no chance on that because he had him moving all the way over to his right and came back on his backhand, and that takes some real savvy as a young player. Bobby Ryan gets goal 27 of the season. Helpers go out to Patrick Jarrett and Andre Sakara, who gets his second point of the game. And we're 2-2, back where we started in essence, with 6-10 and counting to go. And the Spirit have to get some momentum back. You knew if they got a third goal and it made it 3-0, perhaps they're off to the races, but Owen Sound's too good a team to not respond, getting down 2-0 as they did at the start of this period. Now they'll play it up the left wing boards. Gongalski hooked up by Gimlet. That's a bit of a soft call by Ian Smith. Gimlet got the puck back. And the Spirit are going right back shorthanded. He stuck the stick out a little bit, impeded Gongalski's motion, but boy, I don't know. I think with 5.52 in the third, that's definitely not called. But Owen Sound, either way, back with the man advantage once again. Yeah, it's a tough time right now for Saginaw. I think, as I mentioned earlier, Owen Sound is coming through the neutral zone with a lot of speed. They've uh, done a nice job deep in the offensive zone but uh, a lot of what they're generating is coming through the neutral zone, and that'll show up more, especially on uh, power play and four on fours, because there's really no way you can play the one, two, two in that situation, and, uh, and it also exposes your defenseman as far as uh, you know how tight to keep their gaps, and in that situation, the back checker just uh, gave him a little tug, ended up in the penalty box for it. Spirit really need a kill here. Late in the second period, the last thing they want is three unanswered Owen Sound goals. Hooking call on Gimlet at 14.08. Greg Brady, Jeff Jackson, Scott Cool, as well. Steve Wiseman's back in studio. He'll have second intermission highlights coming up. Owen Sound controls, get it to Lehan in front of great save point blank by Weber. It gets back down to Ryan. Corrente steals it from him and backhands a rolling puck back down the ice. Bringing it back up are the attack. Lehan over the blue line. He'll dump it down behind the Saginaw net. Corrente and Jarrett tie up to get to that loose puck. It gets free to Ruzichka, Ryan. Drags it through, Klee skates there and puts it behind the net to Jarrett. Back to the point. Over to Lehan on the left side. Lehan thought about shooting, dumps it off instead. Sakara gets a shot on that rebound chance for Jarrett. Loose puck there, side of the goal, and Aslan slaps it to the corner. 55 seconds to go, man advantage still for Owen Sound. Jarrett to Ryan. Spirit giving him almost too much respect here. Great pass by Ryan. Back to the point through Lehan's skates. And now it'll pop free to Pyatt. He'll send it out and down the ice. Aslan. We'll try and hustle it down as he puts the burners on to chase Lee Hunt. Comes around the boards, left wing side. And the Collingswood, New Jersey native Bobby Ryan ran a little interference on Aslan. No call came. And Ryan, I think, thought he got the worst of that collision. I think Aslan might argue otherwise. He's slow to get up, but now gets the puck loose off his skate. And Lundmark tries to send it right back down the ice. Second chance. And the slap shot in tight up high on Mike Brown, who stumbled a little bit upon catching that. Some confusion in the Owen Sound zone as they try and bring it up. Bissonette will go right wing side for Gongalski. Board just cuts off his lane right into the linesman, no less. And wow, a little bit of a hit up high on the uh, linesman, that being uh, Mike McCreary, but he's okay. We'll drop it outside the Saginaw Blue Line. Just four seconds left in the Gimlet Minor penalty. And for the most part, that's a good penalty kill for Saginaw to try to slow down the uh, momentum of Owen Sound, who's really done a, a, a nice job in this period. And, Weaver had to make a couple of really good saves uh, to kill off that penalty, but uh, it's really something they needed uh, to get uh, some time to get in the locker room between periods and regroup a little bit. Now slapped away, here's Kavapel on a bad angle from the right wing side, but he puts it up high off the post. Borges tried to slap it home, but a bouncing puck hopped over his stick and the attack will bring it back the other way. This game's a matter of inches sometimes and Merrick Kavapel certainly just found that out and like he didn't know it already. Klee goes hard around the boards, gets it out, Past Sanganetti, Cavapel putting the hook in on him, trying to drag that puck away. Now it comes left wing side, Angelitas. He'll cross center and dump it down deep. Weber will leave it there for Klee. Klee's being bothered from behind, had to hustle to get to that puck and got outside the zone. Matt Smith put it back in, offside. A 2-2 hockey game, things heating up here on a Saturday afternoon. Spirit and attack. We'll come back with more next. You're watching Saginaw Spirit Hockey on TV5. Welcome back, Greg Brady, Jeff Jackson here. Jeff, you see Kavapel banging one off the goalie's best friend. That right post might even caught part of the crossbar. 
And that was uh, that was a real important uh, save by the goal the, the goalpost for <laughs> Owen Sound because uh, that could have totally changed the momentum of the game because things have been going for uh, Owen Sound uh, ever since the start of this period. And you sense that as a coach, Joe, you getting a late goal in a period is almost getting like two. And certainly when you give one up, it feels the same way. It's a dreadful feeling heading the locker room, giving up those late ones in the last couple minutes. No question. Going into the locker room, having given up a goal or scoring a goal can uh, change the whole mindset of your team. Yeah, players don't want to see you uh, come in right after them also <laughs> after those late goals. Brochu behind the net for the sound. Plays it off the side of the net. Angelitas tries to squeeze it loose. Burner got his stick slapped at there. Still digging at it in the corner, as is McNeil. Pat McNeil trying to leave it there for Burner. Richardson trying to drag it free. Gets it to Brochu, thinking wrap around and covered up by Weaver right in front. And there's Richardson again. We saw him in a bit of a confrontation with uh, Weaver earlier on and uh, slapping away again at Weaver's glove hand. But Weaver covered up, made the save. One thing Owen Sound is doing quite a bit of on their cycle is it seems like they're changing sides with the puck, trying to spread out the Saginaw defense to, to create some holes for guys to jump into. And uh, thus far, they've made it work pretty effectively, just pushing the puck behind the net to the weak side. And, uh, you know, it spreads everybody else. It's the same type of thing that they tried to do on their power play. Rzichka, Jared, and Lehans, the line for Owen Sound. Spirit counter with Borges, Harrison, and Coghill up front. Out comes to Eric Lundmarks. Played a steady game tonight on defense. Off to Harrison. Harrison up the right wing side. Can't slide past Coverco. Broken up back the other way. Coghill for the Spirit. Lee Hunt strips it from him. Kicked it in. Close to offside, but wasn't. Lundmark will track it down for Saginaw in his own zone. Rzichka trying to run him off the puck. And Sinfeld will play it around the boards. Good tie up there by Coghill, and he's got open ice and numbers. Up ahead, oh, he just missed Borges, which would have been close to a breakaway pass. Borges and Coverco tie up. Coghill with a huge hit on Coverco, or Sakara, I should say, who turned his back on the play a little bit, and Coghill caught him up high with a clean shoulder check. Now Sakara up at center. Harrison runs him into his own bench. Long shift for him. Now Senfeld behind the second on net. Lots of time. Sends it, oh, he was looking up the middle for Harrison. And now Kirazako sends it back the other way for the attack. 1.45 to go. A lot of dump and chase right now, really, for both teams. Over the last few minutes here, Lundmark in his own zone. Has it tied up in the corner by Colin Hanley. 17-year-old for Owen Sound. Got it loose to Igor Gongalski. Gongalski and Harrison. Gongalski's lost his stick, still wants that whistle, however. And the attack will get their wish with 1.24 to go. We'll face it off in Saginaw's zone. I think it's important to remember, too, uh, that both teams played last night, so that could have an impact, especially as the game progresses and the ice is a little bit choppy because of maybe the warm weather outside. Uh, this game could boil down to uh, conditioning to some degree, and I think that uh, you know usually the home team has a little bit of an advantage because they haven't been sitting on a bus uh, for the weekend, so hopefully that works out to Saginaw's advantage. Spirit here off the draw, can't control. Now Klee knocks it into the corner, off to Kavapel. Kavapel tries to slap it up the middle for Gimlet. Gimlet got it free to Aslan. Aslan looking for a lane, good crossing over by Sanguinetti to cut that off and sent back the other way by the attack. Klee's behind the net, got to watch it here. Richardson left it for his teammate. Now Richardson pushes it in front. Angelinas had that come right to him, had an open net as Bissonette will kick it down low. He got hammered into the Saginaw goal by Jamie Klee. Good open ice hit there. Now it comes free Cavapel. Cavapel trying to squeeze through a lane, but Sanguinetti got the puck back out. Now Cavapel squeezes back on side. Here's Saginaw with something here. But Gimlin had it knocked away. Angelitas back the other way to Kirazakos, to Richardson. Richardson flicks it in, got it past Corrente. And now Kirazakos behind the Saginaw goal, tying up with Lundmark. We've got 30 seconds to go in the period. Lundmark came through with a good open ice hit there as well, but he overskates the puck. Turnaround shot by Richardson. That got behind Weber, and Weber made the save, but may have backed into the post as well, and the attack will get a valuable face-off with 24 seconds left. And This is where you mentioned in the first period, as a coach, get your skill guys out there with 24 seconds to go when there's a face-off in the opposing zone. And uh, as Coach Mancini's doing now, he's probably putting his best face-off men on the ice as well as his best defenders. Uh, because this is always an important face-off in the last uh, minute of the, the period. Don't forget, coming up, Steve Wiseman with the highlights of this second period. And a live talk with Dick Garber and Craig Oslin, owners for the Saginaw Spirit. That's coming up, second intermission. Pyatt trying to clear the zone. Spirit probably only need one clear here to get to the dressing room. 
turns around, can't get it past Coverco. It banks off McNeil in front. Jared will chase after it. Sakara trying to keep it in. Burner, though, will flick it out. Menino chases after the loose puck. Couldn't get there in time. It's kicked back in Owen Sound zone, and time expires. So after 40 minutes, the attack, who went down early in this period, 2-0, counter back with two big goals of their own. Sakara, even strength, and then Bobby Ryan with a gorgeous power play goal. That's where we stand, 2-2. After 40 minutes of play, and we're going to have a very exciting third period coming up. There's no question about it. So lots to come in the second intermission as we get you ready for that. Like we said, we'll head it back for some highlights in studio with Steve Wiseman. And coming up in just a second, we'll have Scott Cool with uh, Jesse Gimlet as we get ready for the uh, second intermission to come. And uh, Gimlet's... Gimlet's last man on the ice. We'll send it down to Scott Cool, who will wait patiently. Actually, now talking with Patrick McNeil. Scott. Yeah, guys, we got uh, we got Patrick McNeil here. And Patrick, first off, let's ask a little question about what happened there in front of the net. Uh, I don't know. They just crashed in that hard, and uh, somebody got in there and uh, hit the goalie, and uh, that shouldn't happen. So I uh, tried to get in there and stop it. Seems like we kind of got the short end of that, the way it all turned out, and they were on the power play. They were able to get the goal that equalized this game. That was a tough way to go, wasn't it? Yeah, it's unfortunate, but I mean, uh, we got to stay disciplined and play strong, and. Uh, get the momentum back in this game. Big kill after that power play goal that tied it too for this team. Can you ride that a little bit for some momentum going into this third period, the way you got out of this period? Yeah, for sure. Anytime you kill a penalty, it gives your uh, team uh, momentum, so it was good for us to kill that one off. Patrick, got to ask you real quick. You had a chance to uh, honor the team and represent the team at the All-Star game. That had to be a lot of fun for you. That was a uh, real real fun and a good experience for me. I had uh, lots of fun, and I'd, uh, I'd love to do it again sometime. 2003 top draft pick from this team. Is that any other pressure to you being that and, uh, you know, the, the fact that the guys look to you for leadership? Um, yeah, I know the guys are always uh, looking at me, uh, want me to send them in the right direction, so I try to do the best things I can to uh, lead this team, and uh, hopefully I'm doing a good job. Yeah, hopefully we get that big goal in the third period and hang on to that win, all right? Yeah. All right, thanks, Patrick. Take care. Thanks. Uh, all right, we're going to take it off and uh, throw it to Steve Weissman back at the studio. Patrick McNeil is, of course, serving a little bit of time in the penalty box during that period. Steve? All right, thanks a lot, Scotty. Nice job. Well, the Spirit and Attack tied up at two apiece after two periods of play. Coming up after the break, we'll take you through the highlights of the second period of play, plus an exclusive interview with Red Wing Darren McCarty. So stick around. We'll be right back. And welcome back. We're in the second intermission. Saginaw Spirit Owen Sound Attack all knotted up at two after two. So it's going to be an exciting third period to play. But before that, we're going to head back out to the Dow where Scott Cool joins us with a couple of friends, all around good guys and Spirit co-owners Craig Goslin and Dick Garber. Take it away, Scott. Yes, yeah, Steve, indeed. Standing here with the powers that be, if you will, Dick Garber and Craig Goslin, the Spirit ownership. And Dick, first off, I'm going to ask you, you have got to just be pumped when you see a crowd like this in this arena. I am Scott, it's just a great environment, and I know our players feed off it as well. They always play better with a big crowd. Place is electric today, and I don't think anybody's disappointed. Now, we're understanding that the unofficial number is over 5,000 fans in attendance. That is just an amazing crowd for an OHL game. Well, you know, we've been so fortunate that this community in mid-Michigan has supported this team, so uh, we're, we're so grateful to them, and as I said, we couldn't be more pleased and excited. Let me pull into Craig here real quick. Craig, I know that you always wanted to be a part of this ownership group. This is a, kind of a, almost like a first year in that role for you. Talk a little bit about that and kind of that, maybe a little bit of the fun that goes with that. Well, I'm living a childhood dream, Scotty. Uh, you know, being partners with Dick is just a real honor. And, uh, and then we have a great community here that's really supporting the Saginaw spirit. And we're just, we're so grateful. And I'll tell you, we get a championship caliber team on the ice and we're working towards that. Uh, I think the building will be like this about every game. Yeah, we were talking about that during the break. This team is uh, playoff hungry. They're trying to get the playoffs this year. Boy, if the fans get a taste of that, that's going to be an amazing turnaround for this this whole entire city. There's no question about it. We're in a playoff hunt right now. We have 10 more home games left to, uh, to enjoy this excitement. So I invite the fans to come on out at the Dow Event Center and enjoy with us. Appreciate it. Dick, I want to ask you one more question. When you first got into this, we talked a little bit about it then. But is this kind of what maybe you envisioned all along with this team? Obviously, you'd like them to be a little higher in the standings. But as far as this kind of community support for the Saginaw Spirit, is this what you planned on? Well, Scott, this is what you hope for. I know when we were in the process of trying to acquire the team in North Bay, we had so so much outpouring of support. 
that uh, both Craig and I had a pretty good indication that the community would, this was a lot more than just lip service, and they really would stand behind the club, and they have certainly delivered. And now it's our organization's responsibility. We've got a very young team, but the worst is behind us. I think we got a real exciting future next couple of years with all these 87s and 88s. Uh, best is yet to come. We close the loop on the hockey with a great community support. We're going to have something special here for a long time. Ownership seems to be in great hands, too, and you also got to be real happy with the job that Bob Mancini has done once he had to step onto the bench. Yeah, you know, Bob walked into a real unsettled situation. He's done a wonderful job. Bob's a really bright guy, and he's a great communicator, and the kids have responded really well to him and, and uh, played very hard. And, and uh, as I said, I think we've got uh, the worst behind us and onward and upward, and uh, I'm really looking forward to the next couple of years. I'm looking forward to the next 18 games, but uh, we've got a bright future with a young team here. Well, I'll say it for the entire city of Saginaw, WNEM 5. We are so proud of the Saginaw Spirit organization. Couldn't be in better hands, and we appreciate everything you've done for Saginaw. Guys, I'm going to throw it back to you at the station. Steve, take it away. All right, thanks, Scott. Yeah, the sentiment's the same here. Great job down there. And always, you know, I see Craig Goslin at uh, whenever I'm at the Dow, practice, games, anything like that. So a uh, real hands-on approach. Good stuff. Well, much Studio second intermission, Saginaw Spirit, Owen Sound Attack, all knotted up at two. Well, you know, the OHL has produced many of the world's top players, calling itself the official supplier to the NHL. And one of those guys plays for the Detroit Red Wings. And with the season locked out, we decided to find out what he was up to. Recognize the missing tooth, the arm tattoos. Yep, it's Darren McCarty with the NHL locked out. This hard hitter is grinding on a different stage. Now playing hockey has given us a lot more opportunity to, to work on the band stuff and uh, it's gone really well. It's uh, afforded us opportunities to play across the country and LA and Vegas and going back to Super Bowl weekend to Vegas. So it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun. Now before Grinder the band, McCarty was a grinder in the OHL and credits much of his success as a Red Wing to his time with the Belleville Bulls. There's McCarty with room, scores! The opportunity, I think just with the 66-game the schedule and, and the, the sort of the, uh, you know, you play three games a week and sort of back-to-back, -back, it sort of prepares you a little bit more for what life's like in the NHL. It was one of the, some of the greatest times of my life. But now his beloved sport has been taken away with the NHL lockout, something McCarty relates to an empty net. No matter how many times you meet, it just seems the same thing comes out of it. So it's tough. Uh, you know, we're not negotiating with ourselves. And, and uh, when there's no uh, compromise, uh, it's going to go on for a long time. So in the meantime, instead of rocking someone on the ice, McCarty gets his rush rocking out on stage. It's adrenaline, that's what it is. It's like on the ice, it's adrenaline. It's uh, a little different because uh, you know, you're on the ice for like 30, 40 seconds, that's your shift. Uh, you're up there for an hour, hour 15, that's your shift. And uh, you know, people come out a good time and uh, we're gonna throw some good music at them. And if you wanna buy a CD or find out when the McCarty Rand will be rocking in your neck of the woods, log on to W. Hours down living. Welcome back. A fight right off the faceoff in the third period here. The former captain against the current Harrison and Bissonette. Harrison with Bissonette a little tied up. He's trying to get the sweater over his head, gets another pop in. But Bissonette has taken on bigger before and usually stands his own. Two real heavyweights going out of here, and Harrison coming over with three, four, five, six, seven rights in a row. And he certainly got the edge here, and the linesman jump in and did the right thing there once the sweater was over Bissonette's head. And, Jeff, you said you saw them talking right before, while well, we were in commercial break, right before the puck drop, and obviously premeditated for both teams feel like they need a bit of a jump start coming into this period, and that hopefully will accomplish what they want. Well, coaches never say premeditated, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, they were chatting before the faceoff. There's no question about it. I could see something was going on. And, I knew that they played together, so I weren't sure that they were talking about where they were going for dinner after after the game. But uh, more importantly is that uh, Bissonette was lined up as a winger, so I knew something was happening. And uh, 
Harrison uh, handled himself as he usually does. <laughs> I've watched him fight many a night, and uh, he is one of the toughest kids in the Ontario Hockey League, without question. See there, 228 men. Pims leads the OHL. Neither team will end up being short-handed. Owen Sound one for four on power play chances tonight. Saginaw 0 for one, so it's certainly been tilted. I wouldn't say the calls have been per se, but the advantages have been. And the Spirit need to make sure they are disciplined. We talked about it at the start of the game. Can't take any penalties unless they take away a scoring chance. Now Owen Sound outside their zone. Flipped up to Jarrett. He'll dump it back in behind the net. Weber around the boards. Boy, did McNeil get scrunched in the boards there. Took a huge hit, and he drops to the ice in obvious pain. And Jonathan Lehan got the elbow up high on him, and I wonder, and, and I don't know whether the referee's casing this all into consideration against Smith is, but... When a player reacts as McNeil has unable to get up, does that put in the referees had to make that more than a two-minute minor? Well, if it was a blow to the head, I don't think he has any choice but to make it more than a two-minute minor, and it looks like he is being thrown out of the game here. Um, I, the, the whole start of the period looks like uh, two teams out there both trying to make a statement uh, with the fight by Harris, and I think that that was more or less uh, telling Owen Sound that, uh, hey, we're going to play. Uh, we're here to play, and we're here to win. And, uh, and then... Uh, the <laughs> Then a nice hit like that uh, oh, to boy. the head. I mean, that's uh, unfortunate. Uh, hopefully McNeil's uh, not going to have a, any type of concussion problems. Let's, let's take a look at this here and see where Lee Hunt does indeed catch him. He got him up high. It looked like a lot of shoulder, but I wonder the second player coming in there, Sanguinetti, as well down deep, may have had an impact on McNeil, may have bounced off the one player into the other, and he is still, he's conscious, he's going to be fine, but it's just a matter of when he's able to get up and, Really, you talk about knocking the wind out of you. That knocks the wind and a lot more than just that out of you. And he'll head to the locker room with trainer Brian Bernstein. Making some good progress now, and that's a good sign that he's not having to be helped off. But you certainly worry about a concussion in a scenario like that. And if you're his head coach, that's the last thing you want to see is how slow he was able to get up. Well, he, he did have his legs underneath him, which is a good sign. He wasn't wobbly. So uh, it looked like maybe they were looking at his nose, too. He might have gotten a little whack to the nose as well. But... Uh, the OHL, I know from my experience with them, is very stern to, with hits to the head. And regardless if it was a check from behind, an elbow, high stick, if you uh, if you bring your arms up uh, and hit a guy, ram his head into the to the glass like that, that's going to be a major penalty, and that's exactly what happened here. And Lee Hunt, not that kind of player. Just 23 penalty minutes in 46 games. Very uncharacteristic. He gets a five-minute charge and a game misconduct. Now here's danger. Angelitas roars right in. Takes a wild shot wide of that. Weber has to guard the right post with Richardson whacking away at it. And that was a terrible start to the power play by Saginaw. That's the last thing you want to see to give scoring chances really out of nowhere when you've got such a lengthy man advantage coming up. Well, it's kind of a crazy start to this period. Oh, yeah. That was kind of a, a bad play by Weber there handling the puck and uh, almost gave up a... A guy, an opportunity for a guy to walk right in short-handed. Now Burner will dump it off to Lundmark now. Saginaw's power play much improved, and a lot of it's been the additions of Menino and Burner through trades to this hockey club. Off to Pyatt it comes. Has it stripped by Richardson. Richardson will simply flick it back down to Saginaw's territory. Menino and Burner with the Saginaw goals, and Owen Sound countered with Sakara and Bobby Ryan scoring. Now Pyatt can't get it past his man, Lundmark, working there against Kirizakos. Now some pushing and shoving. This game's getting rough in a big hurry. Now Kavapal got run hard into the boards there, and Burner's going to come in, and a fight ensues between Burner picking up for his Czech teammate against Matt Smith. And Smith, a real heavyweight, the linesman's got to get in there and help him out. And you admire Michael Burner's tenacity and willingness to take on anybody, but I don't know that Bob Mancini wants to see a player as talented as Burner go up against one of the real heavyweights in the league in Matt Smith. I think that's... Uh one of the things about this team that's starting to change is that uh, you can't learn how to win unless you learn how to uh, to win together. And these young guys seem to be sticking up for each other. Uh, you know, maybe they're getting uh, some decent leadership as far as uh, uh, Harrison stepping up at the beginning of this period as far as saying, hey, listen, we're not going to roll over and die for you guys. Uh, and uh, obviously there's been a lot more spirit in this spirit to start this period. <laughs> what a wild period. Like you said, right from the get-go, the fight between Harrison and Bissonette, a five-minute charging and a game misconduct call on Jonathan Lehan. Then Michael Burner has his first OHL fight, doesn't fare too well against Matt Smith. We saw Kavapal as well with a fist cocked, and 
That's not what you want to see also. Now, who does this help more? All this stuff going on with Saginaw. With it, let's say it's a wash here on the penalties, and I expect it will be. It, it kind of kills the momentum of your power play. Having said that, Jeff, Saginaw's power play wasn't doing much. They were pretty apathetic, really, in the first 44 seconds of it. Well, they have a they have a five minute major here to try and score a goal. Hopefully they have four minutes and 16 seconds left. But uh, I think the big thing is they're going to have to generate a goal here because uh, as we were talking earlier, just like killing off a five on three, uh, killing off a five minute major can be a, a major uh, change of momentum as well. So they really need to bear down here and try to get some scoring chances uh, to possibly score a goal. Let's go down to Scott Cool with an injury update on Patrick McNeil. Scott. Yeah, guys, obviously the play has turned a little rough right now. We're interested in the condition of Patrick McNeil. He carried up. It looked like he was kind of grasping his ribs a little bit. What can you tell us, Craig? Actually, he uh, got his bell rung there, Scott. I uh, just talked with Dr. Light and Brian Bernstein. He has a grade one concussion. He did not lose consciousness. Uh, but he got his bell rung, so he's out for the rest of the game. He's done for this game, and with that kind of concussion, that could be something you're going to have to keep an eye on, obviously. Obviously, yeah, yeah for sure. And I'm, uh, I know Dr. Leto will be with him for a while now. So he'll, he'll be all right, but he'll be out for today. All right, guys, you heard it right there. He is out for the rest of this game. Hopefully we don't lose anybody else. The game is definitely taking a little bit of an ugly turn. Well, I appreciate the news, Scott. And, uh, boy, McNeil also, you'd have to think, uh, Jeff, tomorrow, as a coach, you would certainly think tomorrow with a 1 o'clock game in Windsor, pretty questionable for that contest as well. And that's a big game. That's a guy they really don't want to lose under any circumstances. Well, when you start talking concussions, uh, it's hard to say that anything's going to happen within a week. Yeah. Because uh, I know that our trainers in Guelph, we used to have guidelines that our guys had to, to go seven days without any symptoms before they could play again. And uh, and I give the OHL credit for, you know, being uh, real stern on the, the, first of all, I imagine that the, the hit will be looked at because it's going to put McNeil out, obviously, for the rest of this game and possibly more. Uh, so that may be uh, something that's looked at for an additional suspension. But uh, they also watch over the welfare of the players after they've had concussions because it's become such a big issue in hockey. And uh, so much of it, I think, is a result of, uh, you know, plays that cause that type of uh, a penalty. And another skilled player in the box, and that's Michael Berner. And it looks for the time being that he's negated the Saginaw power play. They were to have another 416 on it. But Berner in the penalty box with the only two on the board. And I'm guessing that's an instigator because he went right after Smith after Smith hit Kavapel and did start a fight. As we said, he didn't win it, but he started it. And... That could put him in for two plus five. I mean, the box is uh, five players each in it for each squad. Bobby Ryan in the box for Owen Sound also, who was part of that exchange there. But we'll wait and find out. It's uh, four on four for the time being. And then Saginaw will get their power play back in another two minutes. That's a, uh, you know, that may be a, a bit of an instigation by uh, the Saginaw player. But all in all, I'll tell you what, when somebody takes liberties with your, with your teammate, that's a you know that's an important uh, important step for this young team is to is to really make sure that they're playing for each other as much as they are playing for the the, the city of Saginaw they're playing for each other and somebody takes liberties with your brother you have to step up to the table and even if it means taking a penalty in that situation uh, in the long term it's one of the unwritten rules of hockey that you uh, you have to step to the plate when somebody takes liberties and they've done that twice now after the hit on their goaltender as well. Now Rosicka in tight blocker safe there. Corrente got the helmet knocked off, so he'll have to head off for a change and get another player out there. Long pass intended for Klee, who is joining the rush. Too far for him. Icing's the call. Lost in all this. The score. It's 2-2. Owen Sound and Saginaw with 18-24 to go in the third period. And the Spirit also finding themselves, Jeff, in a position where, let's face it, they're in this hockey game, and then some. So points, to get points out when you need points desperately, so important at least to get one, if not two, out of this hockey game. A coach like Bob Mancini has to be thinking that at the moment. Well, and the, the tempo of this period has start off definitely a lot slower than the last period, which works into their favor right now. Uh, the way that Owen Sound played in the last period. And I think that Saginaw is probably going to put up a fight here to uh, to earn that point at least. Now Sinfeld from the point. We'll play it in behind the net. Sakara breaks that up. But now Pyatt should be able to break up Sakara's outlet. And he does so. Kavapel searches for the loose puck, finds it. Tries to gain some open ice along the boards. Got it back all the way to the point. Corrente couldn't keep it in. Garrett Sinfeld will chase it back in his own zone. 17-year-old actually played last night in Tecumseh for the St. Thomas Stars in the Western Junior B League. First OHL game today. Aslam tries to play it off his skate. He's got Kavapel down deep, and that's who he gets it to. Kavapel behind the net. Can he make something of this here? Puts it right in the slot area. Ferguson, Fletcher rather, got his lane cut off. Now Clea point shot, and Brown 
will kick it off the pads up into the netting above the high glass. So 46 seconds left in Burner's minor, and then the Spirit go right back on the power play because there's still 3.02 left in the five and a game that Jonathan Lee Hun received for knocking Patrick McNeil out of this game. And uh, Saginaw's done a nice job so far here on this four and four. It doesn't hurt that they've got Bobby Ryan in the penalty box, but uh, for the most part, they've uh, they've uh, had the better opportunities here in the four and four situation, and now they're going to get a power play right after. Now Owen Sound brings it over center. Richardson puts it into the midsection of Fletcher as it deflected off Fletcher's stick up high. Manino, who has to love this open ice as smooth as he is, puts Aslan well offside. And nothing he could do about it. Aslan had to really put the brakes on there, wait at center, but too often you're in motion and you don't want to stop. And two-line call will bring the faceoff back to Spirit territory. Uh, this game looks like that they're, they're thinking college hockey as opposed to <laughs> OHL hockey or NHL hockey because they've been trying these long passes uh, uh, throughout the game and caught off uh, two-line passes several times. Now gorgeous Bobby Richardson off the faceoff. Puts it inside, excuse me, Brad Richardson. He, of course, a Colorado Avalanche draft pick. Injured Musta last season. You would have uh, coached against him as a 17-year-old. What a good player last year. It was lost to Owen Sound much of the year and certainly affected them in and out of the dressing room. Yeah, he's uh, he's been a real good player and a probably one of the cornerstones of building this franchise because uh, he started off as a young player and did well as a young kid and uh, I haven't seen him that much in the last two years but uh, looks like he's developed uh, the way everybody expected when he got drafted so high two or three years ago. And Colorado Avalanche and Pierre Lacroix hope he's got a good future with them that's for certain. Now it's Giles who gets it down deep inside Saginaw territory rare shift for Scott Giles out there. Now Saginaw back on the power play. And it'll be Corrente up the wing to Menino. Menino settles the puck down as he tries to cruise through center. Sinfeld gets it to McCann. McCann trying to squeeze it through to Menino. A bouncing puck comes. McCann tried to play it off his skate, but the attack will simply dump it down deep. Scott Giles gets the job done, heads to the bench for a change. 150 to go. Man advantage for Saginaw. Now Sinfeld up the left side. Pass broken up by Owen Sound, and Karazakos will send it right back in. Double bounces in on Weaver, and he stops the puck. Corrente is going to start it up through the middle. Got the hook put in tight on him. Crowd wanted a hooking minor on Angelitas, but they won't get it. Not in this close a game. Now McCann comes through. Can he slip it to Kavapel, who's headed down deep? That's who he gets it to. Kavapel in the slot. McCann, wrist shot. That banked off of Sanguinetti skates. Back to the point to Fletcher. Spear with another minute 20 here with that extra man. Manino to McCann. Back to Manino behind the net. He's got Kavapel in his vision. Gets it to him on this near side. Merrick Kavapel back top of the circle. Oh, that cross ice pass for Fletcher nearly connected, but just out of his reach. Now it's off Kavapel's skate and easily able to clear the zone will be Mike Angelitas. He'll send it down deep. Kavapel will start off the rush again. He hasn't left the ice for about two minutes now. Great speed, accelerates, red line, blue line, red line. And now Kavapel into the zone. Takes a blast, low shot. Nearly handcuffed Brown. Had Brown moving the other way, but Brown got the right pad back out. Boy, from blue to red to blue, took Merrick Kavapel about two and a half seconds to cruise over those three lines. Now Sinfeld squeezes it out of his zone, but pushed into the Saginaw bench by Theo Peckham. 15.03 to go in the period, 31 seconds left in the Saginaw power play. It's been a tough power play, too, because uh, with McNeil out uh, with the injury and uh, having Gimlet in the penalty box, I think that uh, it's probably broken up uh, Bob Mancini's power play units. and. There's nothing more frustrating when you practice with certain guys in certain positions on the power play and then you get into a game situation and you're, you're putting guys in that really haven't been practicing in those situations. So it's been uh, a little bit more difficult uh, than the, probably they would have liked. You're right, and yet you go an awkward power play as well because you went from a power play to even strength back to a power play. Now Richardson behind the net for Owen Sound. Banks it off of Lundmark's skate. Owen Sound trying to control this here in the remaining seconds of the Saginaw power play. Lee tries to push it up the right wing boards. The rugby scrum ensues, and Gongalski pins it in and does get the face off. 14.45 to go, third period. The tempo of this game's definitely slowed down. I think that, uh, like I was saying earlier, that uh, playing last night, both teams are probably going to get a little tired, uh, even though there was a lot of special teams in the first five minutes of this period. Uh, it's not the same up and down tempo. That, uh, that we had in the second period. It's probably going to help uh, Saginaw if it continues at this pace. The points are valuable for the Spirit. They're eight points behind the Guelph Storm for the final playoff spot. Guelph has not an easy task tonight at the Molson Center against the Barry Colts. 
who are traditionally a pretty good home team. Now it's pushed out by Klee. Klee had it intercepted by Ruzicka up to Jarrett inside Saginaw's zone. Gimlet out of the penalty box for his first shift since a hooking minor earlier in the period. Ruzicka gets it in front. Now Jarrett got knocked down, lost the stick. Ruzicka cruises in, bad angle shot, and Weber covers up. He was guarding the right post there and ended up making the stop as it got more towards the uh, five hole where Ruzicka was going. And we'll draw it up again. Penalty now over though, and very important for Owen Sound to get through. Losing Jonathan Lee Hunt was one thing, Jeff, but killing that five minute major was another. They accomplished uh, the latter while still having Lee Hunt out for the game. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a tough situation for Saginaw. Scoring on that five minute major would have been uh, a real real positive for them going into the you know the beginning of this period but uh, you know they're hanging in there right now and uh, I think that those fights might have uh, controlled or dictated a little bit of the tempo of this game because uh, it's it surely looks like it slowed Owen Sound down a bit. Now Lundmark and Sinfeld out there now boy Sinfeld no butterflies that we can see first OHL game and he's logging a lot of minutes especially since McNeil went out now Jared tries to crash the crease area Weaver makes the save on a harmless shot and we will come back after this 2-2 hockey game. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Saginaw Spirit Hockey on TV5. Welcome back. Sold out Dow Event Center, and the crowd's got their money's worth today, especially if they're being paid by the hour. Uh, we got a lengthy game here as we're coming up to uh, 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock news, by the way, if you're tuning in. We'll be immediately following this hockey game, Spirit and the Attack today, 13.56 to go in it and uh, well you know Jeff overtime looms large as well in a 2-2 hockey game here. Well the fans have got the thunder sticks going so I think that they're going to do everything in their power to make sure that we don't have OT today. <laughs> Board just wins it there to Corrente. Corrente around the boards. Angelitas broke that up. Angelitas and Klee fight for the puck in the corner. Klee got the stick out a little bit on him. Now Corrente around the boards gets it to Harrison. Harrison his first shift since taking on Paul Bissonette and some fisticuffs and equipping himself quite well. Have to give him a majority decision for that particular scrap. Now it's flicked up ahead. Open ice for Rick Hoghill down the right wing side on a bad angle. Bissonette knocked the puck away and steals it. He'll bring it up the right wing side. Crosses his own blue line. Pittsburgh Penguins draft pick from the fourth round of the 2003 NHL draft. Now gets it to Angelitas behind the net. Angelitas tried to come around. Good poke check by Weaver to clear it away from a dangerous territory. Harrison, touch pass there to Borges. Borges is onside, or had a route to go onside, decides to instead dump it in. Brown knocks it baseball style outside the zone, right to his former teammate, Eric Lundmark. Lundmark to Kavapel. Kavapel through a crowd to Fletcher. He's tied up. This is dangerous now. Here's Giles into the zone. Giles from a bad angle, pushed behind the net by Lundmark. Gimlet scoops up the loose puck. It deflects up high, though, knocked down by Owen Sound. Still looking to find it there as Kirizakos. Now it's brought out. Kavapel tried to poke it up ahead. Pyatt dragged it in offside. Boy, that would have been some rush with Kavapel and Gimlet in two on one, but they pushed the puck, had the puck pushed away from them. Now let's go down. Scott Poole with another special guest. Yeah, special guest indeed. Kevin Schultz from Davenport University. And so often the educational aspect of the OHL life gets overlooked. I know Davenport and Duval High School are a big part of that. Yes, we're, both schools are the schools of choice for the team. And we're very proud to fill that role. It's a collaborative effort between both schools and the Spirit Organization. Life on the ice and then life in the classroom has got to be difficult for these guys. What are you doing to make it a little bit easier? Well, we have a very flexible uh, scheduling process at the university and we take pretty good care of these guys and we meet their educational needs and keep Dick Garber very happy with his intentions to keep them educated while they're playing. Overall are these young men pretty good students? They're very good students. We're very proud of them. We're proud of your efforts as well. Guys we'll throw it back up for more action. Thanks very much. Get an A for that uh, report Scott. Well done. Kavapal in front looking for that go ahead goal and a great save by Brown. Sending the play back the other way. Kavapel couldn't have found himself in a better position, but one of the OHL's best goal scorers stopped by one of the OHL's best goaltenders when he's on his game as Brown stifles Kavapel's attempt there. Kavapel logging so much ice time in this period. Drags it up the left wing side, makes a move. Lost his stick in the process. Kirizakos knocked it away, and I'm going to go out on a limb and say Merrick Kavapel's not as valuable without his stick. <laughs> Fletcher around the right wing boards. Can't clear the zone. It tips off Lundmark's stick down deep. Spirit running around just a little bit in their own zone now. As they squeeze it up ahead, McCann got it to Menino. Menino in a skate race with Conerco. 
Coverco got there first. Now he's hooked from behind by Menino. Sakara cuts dangerously in front of the net. And a good job by Joe McCann to get in his way a little bit and force Owen Sound to transition back in the other direction. Klee tried a big open ice hit on the captain, Jarrett, but couldn't get all of them. Jarrett rules in, past a man, and that bounced over Corrente just wide of the goal. A good chance down deep for Ruzichka to put Owen Sound up. And now a big hit behind the plate. Klee absolutely flattened Ruzichka. And will something transpire out of this here? As one of Owen Sound's star players hit hard and looking to have a tough time to recover. I didn't see all that hit until the very end, but I know it was Jamie Klee that got him. And that looked like a little bit of a high hit as well. It's, it's really difficult to see, but it looked like he brought his, his forearm up too and uh, hit him close to the neck or head area. So um, there's, <laughs> there's some uh, pretty tough hits going on out here today. And uh, you know, obviously uh, players, players are paying the price uh, coming off the ice with uh, concussions and uh, bloody noses by the looks of this. Well, they uh, recover a little bit uh, on uh, uh, Sakara. We'll send it down to Scott Cool. Scott. Check this out. Now, this is really what it's all about. We've got a lot of kids here with us today having a great time at the hockey game. All right, everybody, come on. Let's say, let's go Spirit. Let's go Spirit! All right, what about this mascot? You guys like Sammy? Yeah! What's the best thing about Sammy? He's funny. He's weird. Yeah, he's weird. Yeah. All right. What do you think now? We got a 2-2 hockey game. We want the Spirit to get a goal, right? Yeah! All right, let's say it right now. Score a goal! Score a goal! All right, guys. Thanks a lot, Sammy. Appreciate it. All right, we're going to toss it back up. You got the support from the young fans down here. Let's get that goal now. Thanks a lot, Scott. 100% uh, of precincts reporting, and uh, uh, the six-foot bird is uh, pulling for the home team. That's a good sign. Maybe funny looking. I'm not sure about funny. But uh, I don't think he tells too many jokes, to be perfectly honest. Anyway, Sakara is all right. He's headed to the bench. We'll keep an eye on uh, when he's uh, back out there. I should say Ruzichka is on the bench, so we'll keep an eye on when he is out there. Richardson down deep in his own zone. Leaves for Coverco. Coverco, left wing pass, finds Richardson with a lane. Coghill comes from behind, tries to put a hit in tight on him. Klee tried to shoot it out. He misfired on the attempt. Now a fight behind the plate. It's going to be Klee going at it, this time with Angelitas. And you mentioned it earlier, Jeff. You get retribution when one of your skilled players gets hit. And that's exactly what Angelitas did. The enforcer goes out right after Jamie Klee. I think that's not unusual to see. Uh, this, uh, this whole period uh, has been uh, marred by fights. And uh, that's a sign of a close hockey game. And uh, these kids are playing with a lot of passion. and. Unfortunately, uh, you know, there's been a few injuries in the process. That's what one thing you really do want to avoid. But the uh, more interesting thing to me is none of the injuries have occurred from a, a fight. They've all yeah. been from, uh, from uh, body checks or, or high hits. And we see Mike Angelitas, 19. Certainly the prospect of him Brian being back. And he's had to uh, fill a bit more of the enforcer role. They brought in from uh, the Western Hockey League, Robin Big Snake. And he played to some pretty effective hockey. 33 points in 37 games. 120 penalty minutes as well, but a curfew violation for uh, more than one time this year has sent him off this team. And it'll be interesting. And that you get into a real gray area there with uh, Michael Feud and Mike Stothers deciding when's the right time to, to decide a message has been sent and bring him back. Because clearly they're a better team with him heading into the playoffs. And his toughness and goal scoring is going to come in handy. Uh, as they try and make their run uh, next month. Well, it's so important, though, for the chemistry of a team that's trying to win a championship, uh, not to have guys that are distractions. I mean, it makes a big difference when you've got, uh, you know, everybody on the same page, and that means on the same page both on and off the ice. And uh, I imagine that uh, Coach Struthers probably wanted to, uh, to do more than send a message, but to make sure that uh, some of his other players wouldn't be influenced by something like that, because that can make the difference when uh, the games are on the line. And a bit surprising, I mean, Berner got an instigator earlier in the period for going right after Matt Smith. It was so obvious what Angelitas was going to do with Klee, and he doesn't get the instigator. I, I don't know too many hockey people who are a fan of the instigator rule overall. I don't want to assume your opinion, but boy, it, it really has its detractors, doesn't it? Well, I think it, uh, you know, it, it causes more premeditation than, it, than anything, and, you know, I mean, they might as well eliminate fighting from the game if they're going to, you know, the instigator rule, is, uh, is is really created more problems than it's than it's solved in my opinion. So, you know, and I I think there is a 
uh, a value to fighting as far as uh, cleansing the game and trying to avoid some of the negative things that do happen. Spirit have a chance to rush the other way. Coghill is over the Owen Sound blue line as we're back to hockey, quote unquote. It's pushed right through the crease. Harrison scored. He put it right through the legs of Mike Brown. Brown copped up as fat as a rebound as you will see. And credit Rick Coghill with the early work on that play. Thomas Harrison, oh boy, some words for the Owen Sound bench. Not the best of decisions, perhaps, but he puts it home. His third goal of the season, and we got a walleye on the ice. I know we're going to talk about that later in the period, the tradition of it, but, uh, boy, the longer this game goes, I'm a little hungry. You know, throw that on the grill and throw some fries on there as well. I'd eat that thing. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that, that looks like a pretty good-sized walleye. I mean, that's uh, <laughs> I, I walleye fish all summer long, and uh, well, that one looks like it's been in the freezer a bit, but... Uh, <laughs> All in all, couldn't have happened to a better guy in, in this game for, as far as I'm concerned. Harrison scoring that goal uh, is an indication of this kid's passion. Uh, he started the period off trying to make a statement to the opposing team, and him scoring the goal, I think, is uh, only just. 3-2 Saginaw. Harrison scores his third of the season. Coghill does the legwork, and Eric Lundmark, who's been very solid tonight, gets the helper as he's the one that started the rush. So we've got under 10 minutes to go. A 3-2 Saginaw lead. Pass up ahead was gloved up to Ruzichka. And with Saginaw up by one, things get intense here. We'll go to break and come back. Sag the game standing by with me right now, Patrick McNeil. Patrick, I just want to get the word from you. How are you feeling right now? Uh, I'm all right. It kind of... Little days there at uh, first, but I'm doing okay right now. What are the doctors telling you? Uh, slight concussion, I guess. I guess it'll be off for a few days. I don't know. I want to get back as soon as I can, though. Something like this, when this happens on the ice, it's almost that much more important for your players to pick you up, and they're trying to do that right now, too. You're seeing their efforts out there on the ice. That's got to feel good. Yeah, they're playing hard, and I know that uh, they're going to pull this one off. Listen, you do what the doctor says. You take care of yourself, and uh, we'll get you back on the ice, and hopefully we can still make that playoff run. Thank you. All right, Patrick McNeil, he's doing all right, guys, but he's going to be out for a little bit. Greg, we'll send it back up to you. All right, thanks very much, Scott. 9.21 to go. Spirit put it in offside, and... Owen Sound has to put a real push here on to uh, equalize in the game again. And if you're a coach, Jeff, what are you telling the Saginaw players on the bench right now? Well, I think uh, just doing what they've been doing this period. I think that, uh, you know, in the first period and then start this period with the exception of the power plays, uh, they've pretty much clogged up the middle of the ice. And that seems to me, I haven't seen Owen Sound a lot, but uh, that seems to be their forte. They come through the neutral zone with a lot of speed. and. If you can take away that uh, that area of the ice, I think it's had a, a profound impact uh, on the first period and, and uh, so far in this period. Is there a danger of fine line and being too protective with the lead? Because I said the points are valuable and they got a game in Windsor tomorrow, which they uh, they almost, you hate saying you need one game more than the other, but it's certainly beating a rival is more of a four point game than this is. Well, it's, uh, you know, any conference game becomes an important game at this point, but uh, the, the uh, basically they, they have to learn how to win, and, and to do that, they're going to have to learn how to win games like this. And uh, regardless of where the, the the playoff picture falls, yeah. they have to learn to win games like this uh, because it's all about the future for this team. Uh, obviously, they want to make the playoffs this year, but uh, learning to win these games is just part of the process of becoming a much better team. But from what I've seen, is they're making pretty good strides from the last time I saw them. Faceoff will stay inside Saginaw's zone after a. Bit of a scrum developed there between Gungalski and Joe McCann. Draws one back to Bissonetti. Kept it low, but missed about four feet wide of the left post. Now McCann scoops it out and gets it outside the blue line. When in doubt, get it out. That's the mentality now for the Spirit. You don't want to play the puck up the middle, and you want to be firm with those clearing attempts. Sinfeld behind the net. Up to Menino. Menino drops there for Corrente. Corrente did just exactly the opposite of what I recommended and didn't get, uh, get firm enough with the clearing attempt. Now McCann dumps it to the towards the Owen Sound bench. Bobby Ryan out there. Jeff, Bobby Ryan's not been out there very much. I know he's not 100%, but uh, he has not played much at all in this period. I thought uh, when we saw him go down here in the right corner that uh, I saw him favoring his right shoulder, and I'm not sure if that's the injury he's had, but uh, if it's not, it sure looked like he was uh, uh, holding it a little lower, and that's usually a sign of uh, some kind of a shoulder problem. Now Richardson from a bad angle tried to squeeze it past Weber. Jeff Weber did a good job cutting down the angle. Owen Sound controls the puck at center. The ever-dangerous Ryan 
Goes far side for Smith. Harrison got a knock in on Smith. Puck now behind the Saginaw net. Borges has some room up the right wing side. Under 7 and 45 to go here in the period. Ryan controls. Kicked it off his skate to Richardson. That pass intended for Giles. He overstepped it. Now Harrison's tied up. Richardson's got a man waiting in front. That's Ryan. And it took Fletcher a while to spot that Bobby Ryan had drifted behind him and was going to have a great opportunity with any rebound chance to be in alone on Weber. Spirit trying to clear it here. Coghill got it past Lamb and down the ice. They want to change lines in a hurry. And slapping his stick for the puck was Richardson. He wanted it quicker than it actually came to him. Now back the other way. Gimlet overskated. Now it comes to Pyatt. Pyatt's got room. Kavapples on the far side. Gimlet heads for the net. Pyatt to Gimlet in the slot. And a big save by Brown guarding that left post. Kavapple pushed off the puck by Richardson. Still gets it back, however. He'll cut to the middle of the ice. Wants the wrist shot. Goes up high over the goal. Now bouncing puck comes to Pyatt. Pyatt's tripped up. Thought wrap around in the slot. Kavapple backhand blocked in front by Lamb. What an exchange there by Saginaw. Owen Sound guilty of the same thing the Spirit were a couple minutes ago, not being able to clear. They gave the Spirit more than enough chances to take a two-goal lead. Now ticks off Gimlet's stick down the ice, and we've got a stoppage. We'll bring it back to the Spirit zone. 6.34 to go, 5,037 strong here. They're clapping those thunder sticks. They've loved what they've seen so far from their hometown Spirit. And I think they've uh, they've got something to cheer about because this team's going to get better. Uh, this year and with the youth on the team, this team's got a lot of uh, good young players that are going to make for some exciting times here in Saginaw. Borges and Jarrett on the faceoff. Hanley and Corrente chase after the puck in the corner. Harrison will slap it out and does a good job, not far enough so that it's iced. Less than six and a half to go now. Owen Sound will send it out to Ruzicka. This is dangerous. Up the right wing side. One-on-one -on, -one on Sinfeld. Weber will glove the puck there and decides to hang on again for a whistle. And you mention it, they don't lose much in terms of their overagers. That's the only benefit, really, of having overagers that don't contribute a ton offensively is you don't lose that the next year. Thomas Harrison will leave as captain. They'll miss his leadership. Jeff Weaver's been consistent in goal. They'll miss that. But other than that, all their skill players come back. And that's a real positive for this team, especially, I mean, this team or this uh, league, basically, you win with... Uh, Great goaltending, and you win with uh, good defense. And you know you have to have uh, one player like a Ryan, uh, Bobby Ryan, out here for Owen Sound. And uh, if you've got those elements in place, you got a good chance to have a successful season. And Spirit also with two second-round draft picks right now. They acquired in the Paul Bissonette trade, as well as their own. And uh, they actually got a, uh, actually they moved another one in the uh, Burner trade, and that got one back from Kitchener when they traded Jean-Michel Risk. 5:54 to go. Here in the third period, Saginaw leading Owen Sound by a count of 3-2. We'll be back after this with an exciting, we think, conclusion. You're watching Spirit Hockey on TV5. Hall. He's the father of one of the uh, Saginaw Stick Boys, Hayes Hall. Suffered a mild heart attack, and he's uh, been hospitalized at uh, University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. We want you to get very well soon, Glenn. We know you're watching, and uh, we wish you uh, back on your feet and uh, back on the ice as soon as possible. 5.40 to go. Third period. Thanks to Thomas Harrison's third goal of the season, giving the Spirit their third goal of the hockey game. The Spirit are in position for an upset victory here against Owen Sound. They've never beaten the attack in franchise history. But still a long way to go. That clock starts to move pretty slowly when you've got this tenuous a lead against such a quality hockey team as the attack are. Bissonette leads it up ahead. Backhand pass by Jarrett. Back to Bissonette. Now Bissonette will get to center. Runs into McCann and coughs up the puck to Tommy Manino. Manino to Lundmark on the left point. He'll simply backhand it down. Sanguinetti casually chased that. Bit of a dicey icing. You often see that. Players skate right beside the puck. And <laughs> they seem to uh, suck the referee, the linesman, into making that call. Yeah, and they bug for the, uh, beg for the puck to just kind of crawl over the, re the goal line so they can get another offensive zone faceoff. But uh, so far, I think that uh, for the most part, Pyatt's done a real nice job at the faceoff circle tonight, and I think that uh, they can go into this situation knowing that he's going to at least tie up his man and give them an opportunity. Uh, to win the draw. Spirits still have Burner in the penalty box. He's the only man there. What a great save in tight Angelitas. Pushed out of the crease area by Corrente as Weber made the save there. But the point I was going to make, Burner has been in there for seven minutes because of his instigator minor. 
And he'll be back available to the team soon, but it's the first time all period we've had an empty penalty box except for one man. And like you said, Jeff, that's played with what both coaches have had to do with line changes and depths. Jonathan Lehan out of the lineup, so Owen Sounds had to readjust to that. And uh, I, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just saying uh, I could see that in this, uh, this left circle, Bob Mancini decided to come back with the left centerman so he can pull the puck back to his forehand, which uh, he did a pretty good job of bringing the puck back. Now Trevor Coverco, second-year player for the Sound, back behind the net, puts it on the stick of Sakara. Buffalo Sabres have to love what uh, he's uh, going to bring to the NHL someday as a draft pick. All the way from Bojnic in Slovakia, 4.34 to go. As Owen Sound put it in on the uh, icing as they didn't gain center before dumping it down. So we'll draw it up again. Spirit will take every face off they can get, won't they, with this little time left in uh, Owen Sound zone. Yeah, this period's kind of slowed, slowed down to a crawl uh, with all the penalties and face off situations. It's definitely, uh, I think, worked to Saginaw's advantage with the, uh, the slowing of the game. Pyatt won the face off there again. You mentioned it. He's done a good job on them. He'll chase his own face off win to the corner. Gets it back behind the net. Cycles to Gimlet. Gimlet lost to. An edge, and Richardson able to steal the puck away from his former teammate in Owen Sound, but it's banked off. Kavapel still not out, and Pyatt will control. Now it's pushed out at the blue line. Over center is Owen Sound. They'll dump it in tight on Weber. Will he cover up? He does so, and carefully does it, dragging the puck back with the goal stick to that glove hand. 4-11 to go now, so you can tell both teams' benches looking up at the clock every stoppage. Owen Sound wants that clock to slow right down. The Spirit uh, would prefer running time probably right now. And the Spirit are going to have to keep a special eye on their defensemen are starting to creep up the ice as well with the uh, one goal lead. The other team is best, uh, basically jumping into the play quite often. Now the puck to the corner. A good faceoff win by Pyatt to Gimlet. Gimlet wants to get it outside the zone. He can't do it. Smith does a good job keeping it in. Bounces behind the net to Lundmark. He takes the hit there. And a good one from Kirazakos. Smith keeps it in. Temporary thing, however. Kavapel will send it out to neutral ice. And now it's controlled again by Theo Peckham for the attack. Over on the far side to Kirazakos. Down in the corner to the left of Weber. It flows around to Jarrett. Jarrett tries to push it through the middle of the ice. Senfeld has a tough time finding it. Rzichka in tight. Point blank shot and a save made by Weber. The, part, the oceans just seemed to part there for Rzichka, and he got a clear shot through on Weber, but didn't get everything on it that he may have wanted to. And now Smith sends it all the way back in his own zone, and the pass comes from Mike Brown, the goaltender, to Kirazakos. McCann puts a hook in on him. Puck dumped down deep by Owen Sound. Klee's last man back. He'll play it behind the net to Lundmark. Lundmark chips it up to head to McCann. McCann trying to play it through center. Gets it back, kick to him. He'll play it up ahead. Menino at the blue line dumps it down deep, and McCann will... Hunt after it. Brown around the boards. In tight for Richardson, but McCann was right on him. Now it's back to the point. Corrente keeps it in. It tips off Menino's stick right to the crease area. Menino was a little wide of the net, and it was almost beneficial that Corrente's shot actually was wide because Menino almost tipped it into a dangerous position for Mike Brown. Now losing an edge there down deep is Jarrett. McCann sees the puck underneath him, and Jeff, I'm inclined to agree with you about Bobby Ryan. There's no way that he is 100% with the little he's played in the third period in this situation when you need a goal to force the game's continuation to see him out there as little as we've seen him has been uh, very strange. He comes out now, but I'd say he's maybe taken three shifts total in this period. Well, I'm sure the coaching staff, if they know he's still kind of uh, healing that injury, they're going to be very cautious with him because uh, uh, they're pretty solid in the standings and they don't need to take any risk to where they end up. Uh, it's more important how healthy he is come playoff time. They've got tomorrow off in case you missed it. Patrick McNeil out of this game with a concussion, as Scott Cool told you downstairs. And Owen Sound carries it in offside. Uh, and Jonathan Lehun out of the game for a charging call for uh, taking a good long run at McNeil. Got him up high in the head area. But McNeil just did an interview in case you're joining us with Scott Cool downstairs. So he's well enough to do that, but it may be possibly a week before he's back on skates at least playing in a game where he could possibly absorb another hit now Bissonette's shot deflects he wanted to shoot it in but Coghill got the stick on it it deflects up high and the draw will come in neutral ice again with 232 to go lots of time in this period face offs galore and I think that uh, Saginaw has done a good job of slowing this game right down and uh, against the team with uh, the quality of skill that uh, Owen Sound has that's the way they have to play and they have to learn how to do that uh, even as they become a good team, knowing how to hold the lead, sometimes you have to uh, uh, 
be happy with whistles, and they've done a, a nice job of controlling the tempo here in the third period. Kirgazakos just shot deflected by Lundmark. It pops to the corner to the right of the goaltender Weaver. Back to the point, Sanguinetti. Gentle backhand to Bissonetti, puts it through a crowd that hit a skate in front, and I believe it hit Jared's skate. He'll go after the loose puck. He knew where to go because he felt it hit him and watched the puck go to the corner. Dumps it back there. Nobody home, however. Lundmark sends it up the boards. Takes a good Saginaw bounce. And Borges and Bissonette in a race for it now. Bissonette can't get it out. Coghill in tight. Manito's in there as well. And oh, Coghill put it right into Brown's midsection. And Harrison, it was actually not Manito down deep with him. And Coghill made it. Got a little tunnel vision there with Harrison wide open to the side of the goalie. Put it right into Mike Brown's chest. Yeah, and Harrison's got the hot hand right now, so he should have <laughs> probably given it up. I actually think that... Uh, if I had to pick a player of the game, I think Harrison's the guy that changed the whole game around with the fight at the start of this period. Uh, and then he goes out and uh, scores uh, the go-ahead goal. And now it's just a matter of them holding on with the goaltender probably getting ready to, to be pulled uh, in the next, uh, probably the next minute here. Are you a guy that likes to pull early or do you like to wait till you've got a face off? Do you like doing it on the fly if Owen Sound can push the puck down in the corner? Actually, the fans at Owen Sound would know that best. They used to... <laughs> Give me a lot of stuff because one night I pulled the goalie with 12 minutes left in the third period. <laughs> he was playing that badly, was he? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, we were playing that badly. Yeah. It wasn't the goalie's fault whatsoever. <laughs> Spirit control the puck, though. Klee sees some open ice. He'll flick it down, trying to be tender about it. Not far enough for a icing. Now Kavapa will play it, or try to at least, but Brown beat him to the puck. Pyatt tries to slap it down deep. Merrick Kavapa controls to give it in the slot. Wrist shot and a big save by Brown. That might have been going wide, but Brown wanted to make sure caught it at the left post a minute and 15 to go this is the time we'll keep an eye on Mike Brown who's actually gonna get to the bench a lot faster than some other OHL goalies will he's that athletic now Ryan drags the puck away almost a two-line pass but onside is Richardson it's slapped back now they control Brown was coming out of the net they've got almost six skaters out Brown heads to the cage McCann is an open net plays it off the boards Benito does he see it he does he scores a wrist shot up high and that's a scenario, Saginaw now up 4-2 and on their way to a victory. But that's a scenario where it was always dicey. Owen Sound never really had control, never really had the puck, and they certainly weren't even close to getting a whistle in Saginaw's zone when Brown raced to the bench. And that was a great indirect pass, a real, real smart play, uh, banking it up to the open man to score the goal. Um, I have to really give credit to Saginaw for the way that they played this period. And, and uh, the finish was the best part of all. They, they controlled the puck down in the other team's end, and that's the best way to play defense. So uh, give the kids credit. They, uh, they played a heck of a third period and played it very intelligently in uh, slowing down the, the Owen Sound attack. Well, Tommy Manino gets his second goal of the game, an empty netter. He got a breakaway goal earlier to start the scoring in the hockey game. Now the Spirit win the faceoff. Lundmark back in his own zone, give the assist to Garrett Sinfield and Joe McCann. Now a fight right in front of the Saginaw bench. And I didn't see the Saginaw player underneath here, Igor Gondalski. But boy, I, I would think an instigator there, Gondalski went right after him just with 47 seconds to go. We're not in the uh, scenario where it'd be a suspension if you instigate this late, but nonetheless, Gondalski exhibiting some frustration. He was hit hard all day. And he had the uh, two hits earlier with McNeil before Leon hit McNeil in the third period. It's Rick Coghill he was tied up with there. So the day's over for both those players, and they can start the pregame meal a bit early. And the game, that, that was actually a games over penalty because uh, that was basically just out of frustration, uh, losing a game probably that Owen Sound didn't want to lose. And uh, the emotion that goes along with both teams having players from uh, the opposite team at some point in the season. So, uh, I, I just uh, think this was a, a real tactically uh, good game for uh, Saginaw. And really impressive the way they uh, they played in the third period, and impressive to me because uh, they've improved an awful lot in the last uh, six weeks that I've seen them. Spirit will climb within six points of a playoff spot. They'll also get within eight points of seventh place Windsor. But Barry will host Guelph tonight, and the Storm can make those points right back up if they can get a big win on the road. Guelph is off tomorrow afternoon. Both teams will have 17 games left going into tomorrow. Now Hanley, long shot in, rebound chance for Brochu. Harrison had to be aware and poked the puck to the corner. Now Saginaw's Harrison will flick it off the boards down the ice. Smith's back on his own, cuts right in front of Brown. Owen Sound didn't even get a chance to get the goalie out. Down two goals. Now Lundmark has it at his blue line. 
trying to flick it up ahead for Aslan. Under 10 seconds to go. The puck slapped at there. Harrison will tie up his man at center ice. That's Giles. Flicked by Hanley down the ice, and the Spirit have their first ever victory against the Owen Sound attack. It took 12 games, but they beat one of the OHL Giants today. And not necessarily in convincing fashion, but Jeff, you mentioned it. They did all the little things necessary in the third period. Kill penalty on the power play as well, draw penalties, and they end up getting the victory. Well, this is uh, this is light years away from what I saw them play the last time up in Sault Ste. Marie against probably a middle of the pack team, and they're out here today playing against one of the top teams in the league. And uh, to me, they showed resiliency. Uh, they had a real tough second period, but they stuck it out, and uh, hey, this team may be learning how to win because that's the kind of way, I mean, that's a, the type of period you have to play to win a hockey game. And, like I said earlier, I mean, I think a lot of it had to do with uh, the leadership of, of uh, Harrison starting off the period saying, hey, listen, you guys may be number two in the league, but we're not going to take any guff. Our, we're out here to win this game, too. And that's a big transition for this team because the last time I saw them, they kind of roll rolled over and didn't have that type of resiliency. And they did it as well without Patrick McNeil, and that was so big, his injury. Uh, a lesser team, and Jeff, like you said, a, a, an inexperienced team. Sometimes you expect them to crumble a little bit if one of your key players, your quarterback on the power play and your best defenseman uh, ends up getting an injury like that. Let's go down right now. Scott Poole is with a victorious hey, head that's coach. Fine. He's grabbing his son right now. And that's general a big manager win Bob for the Mancini. Coach, that's okay. Hey, coach, we got a threesome now. <laughs> coach Mancini, I know that you've had a lot of big wins, but this one for the Saginaw Spirit Organization, what are your bigger wins? It is. I'm just so happy for the kids. They've played so hard. Dick Garber, Craig Gosman, the community, the people that have this kind of crowd and support, it's great. You had your game face on early. Your team put their game face on in the third period when it mattered most. It's all about the players, it always is, and when they come to play, good things happen. I, good, a good, good group of kids in that locker room. This might have been a two points that maybe you weren't counting on at the start of the day. Owen Sound, we know it's a great team, but this is the two points again that gets you that much closer in that playoff race. Talk about the importance of these two. Well, you know what? Every two points is important, but you're right. After losing last night, this was a huge game. I couldn't be happier and more pleased for these guys. Coach, we thank you. We're going to talk to some of the players that thank had you. a big effort today. Appreciate it. Let's bring in Weber. Fantastic game, buddy. Hey, guys. This goaltender, it might have gone unnoticed, but I think he had like 38, 39 saves today. You came up big when it mattered most today. Talk about it. Uh, it was just a whole team effort tonight. You know, the boys came out. Everyone knew how bad we wanted this one. You know, they got a few guys on their team that we had on our team earlier in the year that didn't want to be here. And that kind of motivated us to come out and play hard for three periods. And we held them off in the third. It was a great effort. When things got tight, you made a couple of big saves in the third period. And it seemed like the team kind of fed off you. And then they got that big goal. Yeah, I was just trying to keep the puck out of the net. That's my job. And fortunately, I did it. And then uh, when I made the save, the boys were there to clear the rebound and uh, clear their men. So, you know, I can't say enough about the way our team battled tonight. Hey, the fans up here chanting Weber, that's got to make you feel pretty good too. I love the fans here. They're awesome. They're like, a, they're like a seventh man on the ice for us. Real quick, before I let you go, these two points the coach just said, it all two are important, but these two get you that much closer. I know the playoffs are in the back of your guys' mind. Yeah, this game means nothing if we don't come out and keep playing hard tomorrow. We got a big game against Windsor, so... Uh, can I, can I just say a quick hello to my sure, go ahead. my billets, Jean, because she's watching at home. <laughs> Jeff, great way to get it done, buddy. Thank you very great much. Great game. All right, let's get somebody else in here. What's up, big guy? Menino got the empty netter that salted this thing away. That was a huge goal, too, because it could, took the pressure off the team for that final minute. Oh, we, we worked hard uh, all night, I thought, and, uh, you know, we're, we had some chances there, and uh, we just tried to capitalize on their mistakes and uh, keep working hard as a team. What a great feeling this has got to be for your team, too. This is one of the bigger wins for the Saginaw Spirit organization, I'm sure. Oh, definitely. I mean, each weekend we're playing here, we're trying to uh, get some points, trying to get into the playoff spot here and, uh, you know, build together as a team. All right, we're going to get in Harrison real quick, too, and then we got to wrap it up. Definitely. Let's get into big guy. Got the game-winning goal. That was a huge goal for this team, for this organization. Talk about it real quick. Take us through it. Yeah, uh, Cogs went down the wing there and threw it on that, and I was just uh, lucky enough to be in the right spot at the right time. Uh, the guys battled real hard tonight, and we uh, came out on top. 
What a great feeling this has got to be for this team. This is a big two points. I know it. Yeah, absolutely. Owen Sound's one of the top teams in the uh, West, and uh, we proved tonight we can play with anyone in this league, and uh, we're going to take that as a stepping stone. Final quick question. How much confidence does this give you for the rest of the season? Uh, absolutely. It helps with our confidence, but we can't get too high or too low. I mean, last night was a huge disappointment. We didn't get too down ourselves. We came out here tonight and had a big effort. Tommy, appreciate it, buddy. Way to get it done today. Thank you. All right, we're going to throw it back to Steve in the studio. Steve, a heck of a win for the Saginaw Spirit on live TV on WNEM5. Certainly, Scott, a fantastic win, 4-2. We're going to head to the highlights of the third period very, very quickly right now. Big fight, Tommy Harrison getting in with it with Paul Bissonnette, the former captain of the Saginaw Spirit. And then that just ignites the team here. We're going to see Tommy Harrison in front of the net, puts it home. Saginaw Spirit come on to win 4-2. Tommy Menino adding the empty netter. Thanks for joining us here on TV5.